I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. No compulsivity there. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Um, so, are there any uh, changes or additions to the agenda? Items on discussion right now are the budget, the flashing light, and a fundraiser request. I don't think so, Diane. Anything to add? Um, yeah, and I haven't looked at I assume the food service will come up during the budget discussion, right? Yeah. Um, um, we, uh, we didn't add a forum date. Oh. oh, that's right. We, we need we to. Yeah. Talk about that. Sorry. Yeah. We, we talked about it. The team well, talked about it. The subcommittee talked about it, Dave, but we want to propose it. Okay. Depending okay. on how long so the only other thing I would say is depending quick. on how long we spend on the budget, we could, um, we, we finished up a tentative agreement with the support staff. Scott is a member of that team. So we could ratify that tonight if, okay. we, if we wanted to. Um, okay. each, each of the three boards has to ratify it. So, Weathersfield ratified it last night. Okay. We could go into a very quick executive session and come out. There okay. was no major, there's nothing major with okay. that. Okay. Um, do we want to do the budget first or we want to get things done? The simple we can do stuff. the quick things first. Don't That's what I'm thinking. Do the quick things me. first. Um, I still haven't visited the flashing light. <laughs> well, I, can, I found it. Okay. So I can, we're going to move on to the <laughs> flashing light. <laughs> I'm intrigued. What so is this? I really got for it. Well, I got an email from Dave O, which, which was forwarded from somebody at the Vermont um, Transportation Agency, if that's what it's called, asking if we were happy with it, if it was working, and do we want to keep it permanently. And I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> I assume it's the upgrade to the one that was there at the top of the hill just out here. It's at, it's at Martinsville. Well, my direction sense is terrible, but. Um, when you come off the dirt road from When you come off yeah, the dirt road. the transition road, from dirt to paved. Yes, it's right across from the garage. It's yeah. um, oh, okay. solar powered. <laughs> it just tells you to, you know, slow you where your speed is basically, so. Oh. I think, I could it, be wrong. I found it, I didn't go investigate what it did, but. You think it might read the speed? Mm -hmm. I it's it just warns people. Just warns people to slow down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, it says slow down. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 It's just to warn people to slow down. School down. Zone. Okay. It seems yeah. odd that it would be there and not on the other side, which right. is where no. the all the actual Who comes traffic in that is. Way. No one comes There's in that way. There's always been one there. Mm -hmm. It seems so strange. Well, you just don't, because you... It's kind if of you're a blind not sure, spot. you can see. Yeah, it's kind of a rise where you're flying see, around on right. a dirt road and you come up on a rise and there's yeah. a school. That's true. Whereas in this direction, I mean, you see it coming from the road. What's true. the discussion like? Are we happy with it? Are yeah. we happy with oh. it? Oh, <laughs> do we want it to stay there permanently? It was a, it was a trial. Oh, that's what I, that's what I that's what I, I think got it was a trial. I think that they're looking to close out the project to and want to make sure that there's no other issues with it before they close it off. So, do you know who to contact, Christine? I do. To tell them. Yep, I told them I'd bring it up to the board. Sounds like everybody's okay with it, right? Sure. Happy with the Yeah, but I, 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 for one, don't feel qualified to, to, <laughs> weigh, to weigh in on transportation. Right. Mm -hmm. and I um, should things look like at that. it. So. <laughs> As a former traffic engineer. It's a school zone flashing beacon. It was installed this summer by Lafayette under the VAOT statewide south region HRRR <coughs> project. Um, he reached out to somebody from the town in regards to the new school zone flashing beacon light. The 30 day test period is up on the light, and he wanted to know if we are satisfied with it and if any training <coughs> is needed by the contractor to the town before the state accepts the light. Dave forwarded it to me, and I forwarded it to Nikki, I think. <laughs> And I drove I didn't by it a couple times and didn't so notice anything so different. So it sounds like there were, you know, build specific build requirements. Yeah. Yeah. And we and they're asking us if we if they were met. Um, well, it's, in, it's from an engineer. The person. Yeah. Started. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're just looking to close out the project, and they're just making sure that I understand, we don't have issues think, with it. But they're right. still asking us to like whether the contractor performed. Are we satisfied? Right. Yeah. And I uh, yeah. how do we answer that? Because we don't know what the requirements I think, were. Right. 
I think they're asking more from a user perspective, yeah, not, that's from what I think. not from an engineering yeah. Yeah. perspective. They'll, that's why the state would have they'll, inspected they'll, it from an engineering right, standpoint. Right, they'll consult the engineers on that. And no neighbors like said, "Oh my God, that's this thing that's is what they're looking for." Right. Yeah, right, exactly. It flashes yeah. in my window. Yeah. Or right, you can't see it when you come up the hill. We haven't heard that from anybody. No, right. I haven't heard anything you know, about yeah. it. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, mean, I think that's what they're looking for. What could say? What What do we think from a from a user standpoint? It's sort of like when they put in new intersections or new rotaries. You know, they they sometimes will ask the public or neighboring businesses. You know, is it is this working okay? Yeah. And I say no news is good news, right? I mean, right. we haven't had any complaints about it. I didn't even know it was there. Yeah, that's Sorry. appropriate. <laughs> yeah, I know, and you drive, you drive by it pretty much and every you, day. You come that I don't, way, right? I don't oh. come that way. Oh. I come the other way because somebody told me it was actually faster to go the other way, and I... Once in a great I, while. I did, um, I haven't gone that way I did test it. Yeah, I think it, it was you that told me. Yeah, that. it was faster by like a few minutes. Right. Or like, yeah, more than I expected. So... But I can certainly respond. I think if you just get back from a user perspective, yeah, yeah. yeah. all yeah. seems fine. All seems fine. Yeah. yeah. Make sure he knows we're responding from a user yeah, perspective. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Not an engineering yeah. perspective. I think Scott's got a good point. Yeah. Okay. okay, fundraiser request. Okay. Um, so I have. Oh, we forgot. I just left a PTSF meeting. They are talking about a Yankee Candle fundraiser in the spring. So just to let you know, okay. I think that's what we decided. But I'll keep you in. No. And then the other one comes from um, Jamie Bernstein and the student council. They want to have a dance for middle school students in February. Um, they're not really collecting funds, but they are collecting um, <coughs> item donations for Lucy McKenzie, which is um, Humane Society. the Humane Society, yeah. So they have... So like bring a can of dog food to come to the dance kind yeah. of thing. So they're not raising money, but yeah, yeah. it's kind of a fundraiser, so she wanted me to bring it to, um, to you for your approval. Sounds good. And that's it. Have they done the Yankee Candle before? The PTSF? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. This will be a first. This will be a first. Um, it's a new group, and they missed some fundraising that used to happen when the group was um, had been meeting in the past. Right. So they're going to try it. Um, but this one is just for the um, Humane Society. I don't think they need your approval, right? Is It's just to keep you in the know. Is that what we decided I think that's time? what we yeah. decided. Yeah. And when I point yeah. there and there, that's why I'm pointing there. They're still meeting. Oh. Um, but the student council would love your approval. So I don't know if you need to vote on that or it's just a yes. It's just for the Humane Society. Humane. I think. And I think we can, if there's nobody that disagrees with it, we'll just. Consensus. Yes. Yeah, consensus. consensus. That's yeah. the word I'm looking for. Yeah. I will let them know then. Okay. Be true. Excellent. Um, so in keeping with my typical fashion, I skipped right to the items for discussion and skipped over the approval of the minutes and public participation, yeah. which I have done. And you done invited all the public and you did Multiple times. Let's <laughs> participate. <laughs> Just so excited to get into the meet that I forget all this. Mm -hmm. So let's go back up to the approval of minutes. Um, I will accept a motion to approve the minutes from December 13th, 2018. So I would move. motion. Okay. okay. I'll second. Oh, second. Okay. So we had Sarah and Scott. Um, is there any discussion? <coughs> Looks good to me. I read it at home. Yeah. Okay, let's vote on approval of the minutes. Um, <coughs> all those in favor of approving the December 13th, 2018 minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the minutes have been approved. Um, public participation. And I will lean to you, David. We have had so little public. Um, since I've been <coughs> here in the last year. Right. Do you guys have anything specific that you want to discuss or bring up to us? I just came to eavesdrop. Okay. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's good. good. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier than finding it on the ATV and looking exactly. it up later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm here to learn as well. Okay. Um, I'm a parent of a second grader with Ms. Kramer. We've been mm. thrilled to have this be the second year that she's with her. Mm. Uh, done a little bit of, my name's Andrew Leto, um, I've done a little bit of volunteering here in the makerspace uh, with Ms. Grady, and I've enjoyed doing that, and I've just had some time lately to get to know the school a bit more, and Great. I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. Great. And, okay. and your wife, 
um, some of you might know yes. Jill, who helped on the food service committee here. Start started on that committee. Yeah. Just to bring. Oh, them. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I knew you, Jill Rubin. Yeah. Got it. Now <laughs> we got it. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. I'm sorry to turn my back to you guys. <laughs> I, I, is this how we set it up last time? It is, uh, but we really haven't really had public, and you yeah. were kind of like yeah, off in a corner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so. I'm trying yeah. to figure out how to. We, yeah. I know. we could, ha if you guys wanted to move your chairs over there, if that would be more comfortable. Yeah, we or, were or experimenting, kind of, but if you're okay, then. Uh, they were yeah. looking yeah. to be yeah. out of. Actually, I do have line. one. They can't see the board. question. That's it. That's yeah. true. That's a good I've had a phone call from a parent trying to go back. Nora Foote went to a different country during one school semester. Mm -hmm. She keeps calling the town looking for money. And I right. keep saying, no, the town doesn't pay right. tuition. you got to talk to the school board. And supposedly she's gotten a hold of you. Yes, she has. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. and we are in process of, okay. That's you know, of trying and She to called again today, and I said, I'm positive. But I looked it up, and we never sent a check. So yeah. I said, that's between you no, and the No, the town, right, exactly. Okay. I think she just assumed maybe that yeah, the town would kick the town would kick something in, or maybe the town helps with whatever. But no, no. So somehow she got directed to the right place. She, 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 and I have been conversing. Okay. I think I've been keeping at least the board up to date. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. She, she did contact the school. We sent her. She did or did not. She Good. did. We sent, oh, her to you. Yeah. we sent her to David. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah. yeah, I did too. But yeah. obviously, she didn't like that. <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and since you brought it up, I mean, it is a it is a fairly complicated issue in the sense that oh, absolutely. there are some high schools um, that participate in these foreign exchange programs, mm -hmm. it's, uh, like Hartford does. Mm -hmm. I know, for example, Windsor does, mm -hmm. uh, Woodstock does. For some reason, Hanover does not. Mm -hmm. So consequently, we as a board, and I think I've explained this in emails, certainly I have to, uh, it's Nora, right? Is it? No. Uh, no. No, it's not Nora. It's a uh, student. Alice. Al Al no, right, that's the other student. Yeah. Um, so what I've explained is that by law, and I've given to the section of the law, and I consulted with our attorney again just to make sure nothing has changed, we are only able as a board to send money to a, a, um, a legally approved independent uh, or public school. Um, we can't send it to an organization, uh, and, and quite frankly, this, uh, I think it's YLF or whatever it is, it's a, it's a, it's a, I think they're nonprofit, but, but they're an organization that basically high schools work with, right, that's how they get kids to go on these things. But we, what she's got to do is convince Hanover to keep her enrolled there. It's crazy because it would be cheaper yeah. if we just paid, but but technically we can't do that. And if we, it's a slippery slope if we do yeah. it. And she's she's now just trying to see if Hanover will do that. Her other option certainly is that uh, she could find another high school that would do that for the for the senior mm -hmm. year. So we're, we're sort of trying to brainstorm, uh, you know, right. answers. But to pull that apart. A little bit. That, are you saying that if the high, the high school is a participant in this exchange program, that they take care of paying? That's correct. So, the, our school district pays, for instance, Windsor or Hartford a normal tuition. Correct. That high school pays the exchange program. Correct. Student goes on exchange. Right. And it doesn't cost the school district any more. Any additional money than normal. Right. And then Hartford or Windsor <coughs> transcripts whatever credits they get at whatever right. exchange program. Right. And Hanover has told her that <coughs> that they'll transcript the credits, but for some reason they won't be the pass through. But they won't pass on, on, on the money, which is kind of which is kind of interesting. So and, and it's odd because generally with these programs, the family pays something too. That's I mean, correct. The high school, you're not going for no. for free. Matter of fact, I, mo normally I you pay. pay. And, and I, that so that that's seems to be the crux of the issue. Somehow she has in her mind that the foots didn't pay a dime. Right, and that's not true. Right, right. no, yeah. exactly. And that somehow she has that part in her mind. Yeah, yeah. So somebody yeah. Her, paid the her under I, Yeah, I think her understanding is incomplete. Yeah, yes. she's doing that Absolutely. research now. Uh, yes. We would have paid the tuition because mm -hmm. I think the foot was uh, Nora was at. Um, Hartford. Mm -hmm. We yes, would have was. paid Hartford the tuition, right. um, but then the exchange would have been worked out between Hartford and the Foot family, and and the pr and usually they're 
there is something that, that, so, that okay. they oh, have yeah. to come up with yeah. and pay. Yeah. So I, I didn't yeah. understand that there was another family here, and I mean that you were, were using as an example in this conversation. Right. So let's be careful about that's correct. Yeah, right. About the camera going yeah. and everything like yeah. that. Yeah. But she was just trying to find whether there was precedent right. for this or not, yeah. and I don't know what you know. This was a, that was a long time ago. That That's other a long family. ago now. Yeah, yeah. At least ten years ago. Now. Yeah, t I think it was two thousand and yeah. Yeah. She graduated nine, in twelve. She yeah. graduated in twelve because she graduated. Yeah, I think she went in her so maybe sophomore or junior year. So no, she graduated in eleven a year yeah. after Spencer. I think so, they yeah. said two thousand ten. Yeah. So that was it was it was one thing it was before my time. Yeah. Secondly, I'm sure it was. A whole thing Hartford did with that family, not right. not the, this school board. Because the other thing too is, for example, and I use this example. Um, let's get away from exchange programs for a minute. Drivers' education, right? You pay tuition to a high school, um, and that tuition includes driver education. Mm -hmm. If the parent goes to a, chooses a high school, for example, like Hanover that doesn't offer driver education, we, we haven't that. paid for that because you've already paid <coughs> tuition and unfortunately Hanover is not quote unquote a Vermont. All Vermont high schools have to provide driver education, but Hanover doesn't. So it ends up becoming a, a, a personal expense. And that's what I mean by the slippery slope. If we were to open this up and start paying organizations for things high schools don't provide, you, you'd end up spending, you know, you could end up spending a fair amount of money. So. Hopefully she'll get to the bottom of it. She's been, you know, she's been very polite. Uh, you know, she doesn't like all the time what the answer is, but she's figuring it out. Now, if it was a private school in London that was accredited. That's correct. Then that would be a different situation. And I think that's something that's correct. that, you know, yeah. m maybe we should just keep in mind could arise at some point. That's correct. We we, um, we can the law states that we can uh, yeah. we can uh, pay uh, tuition to program uh, schools in right. state or out of state, and we have. Right. We, we've sent kids to Canada. We have sent kids to, you know, as long as they uh, usually I run it by the state. You know, I show them the website and blah blah blah, and and the state will say yeah that's you know even though they're not in our book. That's fine, but that but that school transcripts the credit. Right. Usually, right. that's where the student graduates from. Yeah. Right. But this this is different. This is transferring the situation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll we'll figure it out. Um. So, are we ready to move on to the budget? We have more public yeah. that just showed. We have more public. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Um. Okay. Uh. Ed, are you going to initiate the budget conversation, or? The public might want to say something. But they didn't know when to talk. Was there oh. a chance? I did that. Sorry, so they just came in. The, uh, oh. Budget on Friday. Wait a second. Does anybody get it? Does that actually get turned on again? Does anyone need a copy of it? If you have one, that would be great. Yeah, my I would screen love one. keeps flipping it around when I try to. <laughs> look at it. And I, so I either have to put my head on the side or. <laughs> Mike. Yeah, I did. You brought him. I'm going to write in magenta because it's going to make me happier about the budget. <laughs> I appreciate that explanation, David. Okay. Yeah. That was Thanks. good. That was good to, yes, to say that, that like here. Yeah. Yeah. I'll three like that. Okay. Because we get requests. Yeah. Well, oh, thank you, Scott. <laughs> hey. Thank you. Diane. What was the fourth thing on the agenda? What was the fourth thing that we added to the agenda? Uh, I brought my own. So when we spoke the last time, I think I told you at that point that I could not do uh, give you a tax rate because I did not have certain numbers from the state. So those numbers I have gotten. What I was waiting for to get from the state. We're gonna get you a pelmet. Base rate. So this base rate is what it costs to. Uh, is this on any of the specific pages you gave us? No, not that sheet. Okay. But these are numbers that go into the formula that we'll walk through. So 
this base rate is if you can if you can um, educate a child at ten thousand six hundred sixty six dollars, your tax rate would be a dollar. Okay. Going down here, this is your equalized pupil number. So you can see from comparing it to FY19, it went down three and a half percent. That's the full amount that it can go down. You can't go down or up by more than three and a half percent. So it fell by the, the full amount. In the same way with the CL, uh, the CLA doesn't have a ceiling on an up or down, but it did go down by 2.96 cents. Both of these, when this goes down and this goes down, that's not good news. Okay. Your CLA is still at over 100%, over which is good news, but having had it gone down, it raises your tax rate, as does the declining uh, equalized pupil, okay? Then down here, this is your tech FTE. Now, tech FTE is a number that the state provides us with that is a three-year average of the enrollment for students in the tech centers, okay? And how that works is we get that number the state that calculates a portion of the tuition that they'll pay, and we'll show you how they calculate that in the next year. And it's not the full amount of tuition. So what will happen is we'll take what the state pays, we'll subtract it from what the schools are charging, and the balance will be due from the town. Now, these numbers, FY18 is 10.59, 19 is 11.52, 20, we haven't gotten. But what, that doesn't necessarily reflect how many kids you actually have in the tech centers. I mean, you could have 15 kids, but they want to smooth it out for the, for the tech centers so that they don't see big ups and downs. So that's why they've come up with this tech FTE number that they provide us with. In addition to that, they do pay a significant portion of the tuition directly from the state to the tech centers. So those are the numbers that were lacking the last time that we were here. Um, the next part of this is just walking through what they call the Act 130 spreadsheet, which will show you how we generate a tax rate. And it's still thinking about opening it. So, uh, are there any questions on any of the numbers I just presented? I was doing some reading. Uh, and that your what you're calling base rate looks a lot like what others call yield. There's two different numbers, Scott. One is base rate, and one is property yield and income yield. They're two different numbers. The income yield is used to generate your income sensitivity piece, okay, which I will show you later. I I said base rate because I they changed these names. And I keep thinking it's to me it's still the base rate, but they changed it to property. Okay, yield. so it's yield. Yeah. Okay, so what I, it's the same as what I was looking at. Right. 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 So the base amount. This is the amount of the uh, consumer price index from New England Economic Project. This number is provided to the state, and they use this number to generate the portion of the tuition that they're going to pay from for uh, tech tuition. So 87 percent of this meet CPI is what the state would pay. That's what you would subtract from tuition, and then you, this, the town is due, is due back to the tech centers, the difference between this and the actual tuition, multiplied by the tech FTE, not by actual students, okay? The next piece is from tax commissioner. He set this forever, fixed it forever more at a buck. The uh, non-residential tax rate has does change. It does go up and down. It's 1.58. Base income cap percentage. This is a fixed number from the state, 2%. This is the CLA that we showed you. I showed you earlier. This is the equalized pupil. These two numbers, this 11.52, because I don't have the tech FTE, it's going to stay the same. Then we get down to here. And this is currently, I believe, I'm sure that I'm not. You can just hit those tabs right on there, too. Uh, that's not going to 
What I'm trying to do is I was playing with this and I added some numbers in there. And I want to take them out. So So I want to make sure that the numbers that you guys have are the numbers that are up here, okay? This is the, t the current budget that you've got. Mm -hmm. This here is what we call local revenues. And the local revenues are designated by the state. And they're made up of these uh, the assessment sub sub subsidy was from last year. It was a one-time thing when we went to equalize pupil. Uh, the deficit, I call it a deficit because in FY19 it was a deficit. <coughs> then the state aid for transportation. You can see I've just carried over the same number in FY20 from FY19 because I don't have the other number. But this is w essentially what makes up your local revenue. This is the year-end balance that the board has to decide tonight how they're going to use. So if we go back to this spreadsheet, we'll start with not having that in there, okay? So you keep going down. This whole section these are the exclusions to excess spending provision. This area here, when you total this up, okay, the total of all that right there is thirty one thousand eight hundred and eighty seven, all right? And the excess spending threshold is $18,311, okay? So if you're, if you're equalized, your education spending per equalized pupil is over that amount, you're paying a penalty, okay? Ed, I'm so sorry, a special guest wanted to come in Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was needed. Um, <laughs> to cheer us on. I know. <laughs> it was a good time. I can even tell Yeah. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> so page two of this starts to take all those inputs and starts to calculate your tax rate. So this was how much you're going to spend in FY20. You don't have any other added additions or subtractions, so it just falls down to here. There's that local revenue number that I showed you what it was made up of. So you're taking this. You're subtracting out this, and you're coming up with 85, 20, 8, 14. Okay? You take that number, and you divide it by your equalized pupils, right? That means you're $18,432.15. Okay? That's what goes into this section to see if you are over the excess spending threshold, the, the, um, the allowable uh, ed spending threshold. So. There's the 31877 that I talked to you about, that the, the culmination of the exemptions that you had allowable. You take that number, you divide it by the 462. On an equalized pupil basis, you can take 6898 out of this number to compare it to this number, okay? So taking this, subtracting out the 6898 gives you 18363.17. You compare it to this, and you're $52.17 over the excess spending threshold, okay? So now what happens is you take this and you add that extra money 
And that's what you start the formula with. Okay? Now, this is the property yield right here, the 10,666, right? You're taking this number and you're dividing it by 10,666 and you're 73% above that number. So your tax rate is 1.7330, all right? Then you take it and you adjust it by the equalized, by the CLA, you're over 100%, so it adjusts it down, okay? Which uh, adjusts it to 1.7054, you keep going down, the tax rate 1.7, so it's 15 cents in a bit more. Then when you compare it to last, year. to last year. And you can see that with the tax scenarios that I showed you here. And that is in your packet, okay? <coughs> Same inputs. There's the amount of equalized spending, edge spending for equalized people. There's the tax rate. There's last year's tax rate. 15.14 cents is higher. This is what the valuation will do to homes of different. This is what that tax increase would be if you looked at FY19 FY and compared it to FY20. So for a home of a value of $300,000, your tax is going to go up 454 bucks. And you can see it just by going from here across. So 100,000 is 151 and 500,000 is 757. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now if I go back and I say, all right, well, let's, let's add in the surplus and let's see what happens. I go back to this and I say in this setup, right there, you guys can't really see it, but that's the 204471 right there. That's the surplus from FY18, okay? And I'm simply going to put it in here, and I'm going to say, take the 86,000, and I'm <coughs> going to add it. I'm going to add the 204 in. And then I'm going to go back to the second page. <coughs> and go to the top. <coughs> Same amount next expenditures, correct? That changes to 29750. So you take this, you subtract that, this minus this is. 83.16.343, right? You divide that by 462.28, and you come up with 17.989.84. When you compare it down below here, you still get the same exemption. That's 68.98. Takes it down to 17.920.86. It takes it under, okay? So when this happens, all they do is take this number and they drop it right down, okay? So. Your tax rate stops, gets adjusted once you do that by your, your uh, CLA. The tax rate becomes 1.6598. And if you go to your sheet, <coughs> you'll see that that's, I believe, 11 cents. No, 10.58 cents. Different than last year. If you right. use, if you use the carryover. Right. And this is the chart that will show you based on different price <coughs> evaluations what the difference between nineteen and twenty would be. Can you tell us just how much of the surplus from FY nineteen would FY eighteen. Eighteen would need to be rolled in to just avoid the uh, Act forty six penalty. <coughs> Um, well, yeah, I can play with it for a while. I was going to say, you probably wouldn't have to add much because if you noticed, you were only over by 50, mm -hmm. $52. So, I mean, well, I mean the, yeah, the 52 is a function of that, of, of, of that, that threshold. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so, if you're trying to capture that 52, I mean, you, you're probably not going to have to put an awful lot of the. So, if I do 100,000. What does that tell us? I was going to say, even, yeah. Well, you don't get. If you if, if we rolled in if we I had bet you twenty thousand would get you under the threshold. Yeah. Oh, well, then you're wondering what the tax rate would be if we're not penalized. Yeah, you're not penalized. yeah because the penal the penalty is, is, is right. uh, so 
something that's out of our control that mm. kind of makes it doubly bad. But isn't bad. there legislation on how we have to use the surplus? Well, there's two ways you can use the surplus. You can either use the surplus, you don't have to vote on it if you just have it roll into the next year's as local revenue. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one of the ways you don't have to have an article. If you do decide to do something different with it, Oh, like a building thing. Like or put it into your capital. You have to yeah. use one separate, separate article. Okay. Okay. All right. So I just lowered it to seventy-five thousand, and it's still like so. If I go to seventy-five, <coughs> seventy thousand. Still keeps you under, right? Yeah. Go to twenty thousand. Not going to use much. Yeah. Like I said, to get it under there. Hmm. It's still under. Yeah, you can see what it. Uh, this is what it is. <coughs> eighteen two ninety one fifty four, and eighteen two twenty two, and eighteen three eleven. Yeah, if I go to twenty thousand, it'll go flip right the other way. The other way. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. T I'm gonna take it down a little bit at a time. I'll say, let's go to fifty five thousand and see what it does. Okay, here we go, David. <laughs> now you put 200,000. Do you want to do this? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you always call me Every for the time I present this, you have, all of a sudden you get this energy. <laughs> oh, you're so close. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> just skipped it. 25. <laughs> but it's not, 25. Not, it's not 25. 25. Yeah. Maybe 25. Okay, Maybe I think we know enough for that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was estimating. Then what's the, I want to know what the tax rate is. Oh, yeah, what is the tax yeah. rate that's if we really yeah, want we'll to know? We'll get there. What's yeah. Oh, that's 20. Yeah, that's right on the edge. So that's probably it. So yeah. So what's the tax rate with that? <clears throat> well, he wants to get exact. Well, oh, I'm just trying to see how close we can get. Yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So what's the tax rate? I think you're knocking up. Still 60 close to 15 cents. Nine, 69. Yeah, so it's 14 cent increase. Yeah, so it's not, it doesn't help. So much. it's not much of a so it's not penalty a, either. It's not a the penalty's step not. function, it's an incremental. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that, those are the right terms? <laughs> I think yeah. you get tax double on your overage. Is that what the penalty is? No, you just get added. All the dollars get added to your per pupil cost. Anything oh, okay. gets added to the per pupil cost. Gotcha. Um. Because there are okay. some, you know, there are some districts that are, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 over that. And that makes a huge impact on the per pupil cost. Right. Mm -hmm. So the other thing is, is that unless there's any questions on this, I just showed two scenarios. I showed with the sur surplus in and without it. Um, so that you can see that ten and a half cents is for with it in, and fifteen point four one cents is with it with it out, and you're in the penalty. The other thing that will uh, affect this is that I believe you're going to have your own food program, correct? So you're we subsidy. We need to talk about it. Yeah, we need to discuss well, it. this doesn't have that in there. To add that in, I have to add in another thirty-eight thousand dollars. Okay, so can you do that right now? Yeah. <coughs> That's why I was doing with. Why you? How could you? Right. Up to two hundred. So the the stay new stay subsidy that. for the food program would be yeah seventy thousand five hundred and twelve bucks. I believe. Seventy-two thousand five hundred 
right of yeah. that 38 is different from right. last year so that's I already had some in there in order to get so it to that to number 44. I had to add another 38,000 oh okay yeah. um, okay that's so he added a 5% increase plus right. that. okay just a subsidy piece and that's if we go 50 50 with Wethersfield or that's if we go 50 50 right. that's a 50 50 split okay. and is that on the is subsidy that the right thing to do or is that up for discussion how's that um, we can discuss it a little bit. I think. I mean, I guess what's the so Weathersfield had their meeting yesterday, Last night. and um, it was put forth toward the board. Like, and they decided they did want to move forward. It was talked as a fifty-fifty split, and that's what they agreed on, with the caveat that they have to investigate the breakfast after the bell um, program to get more revenue. And then the idea is that we would basically at the end reconcile. So if all of a sudden we're feeding right. twice as many kids as they're feeding, obviously we should be getting that revenue. And right. they should, they should right. so yeah. there would be reconciliation at okay. the end. Yeah. 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 That's yep. Because that has been the pattern. You would do a lot of Right, that, that was the pattern. We were subsidizing to a lesser extent. Yes. yes. So uh, we were subsidizing. The, if we tried to do it a little bit closer to like the ratio, it would be like they would pay 95, uh, 65 and we pay 35% okay. of the, the cost. Okay. And so really we're looking at about a $44,000 increase over last year. Under that scenario? Yeah. Under the 50-50. Okay, so with that done, um, I'll use the same two scenarios I used before. Okay. Uh, the first one I'll, I won't put in the surplus, and that raises the tax rate to uh, one point seven two oh seven, which is a sixteen point six seven cent increase. And then if I go back and I add in the surplus, the entire amount. Not the twenty-seven thousand to just get out of there. The tax increase is eleven point three four cents, and that's about right because about every <coughs> about every forty plus thousand dollars of extra expenditure oh, is about a penny. Yes, on the tax rate. So, so if you if and you what was the tax rate again, Ed? Which tax 11 .34. rate? Eleven thirty-four. Well, it would be. A an increase of 11.34 plus, uh, so it's one That's six with six the surplus. With the surplus, it's 11.674. Right now, I was looking at the original number, not the difference. Okay. Um, okay. So that's less than a penny. Can you plug those in to, can you plug the full surplus into the valuation impact? Mm -hmm. I did that here. Okay. So what big of a change? Well, the top one would be the tax rate with no surplus. And this is what it does to the valuations, and okay. this is with the surplus. Okay. Okay. So, so I think what's important for the board to know is that <coughs> certainly between the last time we met and this time, <coughs> all the numbers that calculate in that spreadsheet went in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Right? So student equalized pupil count is coming down and that's happening across the SU. It's happening across the state. It's one of the things everybody's addressing. Each year fewer students, each year students with increased needs, right? So it's sort of, that, that's, that's what the state's wrestling with. Because the other thing that you know in this budget is there were some other costs that, you know, we have minimal control over that have, that have gone up substantially like our special education assessment from the SU, you know, that went up, I don't know what it was yet, but it was, was it 30% or 20% or 
special education was 26 percent. 26 percent, yeah. And the SU assessment was 7 percent. And again, Karen, our special ed director, has, you know, she's done a, you know. Went up $177,000. A, a three. The, 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 um, that was ed. the total, uh, that was the Heartland portion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of okay. special ed. Right. Okay, so. Uh, I mean, I'm, so I'm not explaining things away. I'm just saying, you know, we also are negotiating, you know, with both teachers and support staff. So we've built in salary increases for staff, which also impacts that special ed budget, because right now special ed is the largest employer in the supervisory union in terms of number of people, behavior interventionists, support staff, case managers, it's, it's the largest, if you want to think of it this way, it's the largest school we have in the supervisory union, employee-wise. So anytime we have a benefits increase, anytime we have a salary increase, uh, that gets whacked pretty hard. The technology assessment, it shows it's going up by 69,000. Um, but there's an offset there. That's correct. Although the offset is not at one at one it's meeting. It's not a one for one. At right. one meeting there was a, an indication that we might only be paying two or three thousand. It seems like that's not the case. It's more like thirty. Probably you look at your, we're you look increasing your, it's our it's two or three thousand more than we asked for. So we need more, um, in talking with Christine and Christine and Larry's conversation, the school itself needs more um, technology well, okay, so upgrades that, 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 that bar exactly. yeah All right. well no that was part of that conversation originally way back but Larry hadn't pulled the numbers out okay. um, specifically for me but Heartland's contribution to the tech assessment um, and then when it's billed back to us it ends up being like three thousand dollars different from what we asked for so for the people okay. in the audience what they're talking about is that the technology mm -hmm. assessment is the assessment that is associated with everything that relates to technology. So up until uh, this year, we had put everything in, all the techs, everything except capital equipment. And this year, the board, supervisory union board. the supervisory union board elected to put that into. But we haven't passed that budget yet. Uh, well, technically, you, you, you did. Unless you we did. Yeah. You no. did. You tentatively passed it with some caveat that you could go back. But now that people are passing their budgets, we tried to have a meeting, we didn't get a quorum to revisit that budget. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it w at this point, it would be very difficult to change that All the boards that would have budget. to come back and yeah. meet. Like, for okay. example, Weathersfield okay. passed their budget last night well, I with that assessment. We called it wasn't a complete. Right, it was, it was a tentative. I, so we're going with the tentative is a yay. Is what you're saying? Yeah, that's pretty much yeah. what we've been using. We had a meeting we on 1219. We didn't get a quorum. We didn't get a quorum. I know. I was there. Yeah, you were there. You were, you were not part of the absent quorum. <laughs> yeah. But I also think the other thing we looked at, you know, special education may be a little bit differently, but, it, you know, special ed tends to be what it is. With technology, if you pull that out, let's say it was even a $30,000 difference, it's, it's probably less than a half a penny on your tax rate, <laughs> if you follow my, there, 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 weren't, there weren't tons of money there to, to. The two, I mean, if you look at, our difference in our budget is $571,000. And 250 of that is the SU assessment, mm -hmm. which we have no control over. And 256 of it is tuition, which we also have no control over. Correct. So more than half a million of our Increase. Right. Matter of fact, I think it's things that we have absolutely no control over. I think a K eight budget actually either went down or went or, or went up less than one percent. Yeah. So and we really only have control over seventy one thousand. People in the audience, right. there was a very un there was a sort of even. unfortunate numbers 65. game. Yeah. That we have a large, we have a very a very large eighth grade class, so we're about to be paying tuition for a larger number of students, while the rest of our population declined. Correct. So that's a very just unfortunate situation. And make sure you put that in footnotes. When you present the budget, you should show yeah. the eighth grade that net. Yes. Yeah. That yes. net. Separate that out so the people in the town have been through this many, many times. Yeah. You separate it out. They can see that. And you understand it 
So when you explain it, right. it will help you immensely. Yes. Yeah. So it's like 15, excuse me, sorry. Uh -huh. But is, is it like 15 more kids? No, I think it was six. I think, it was yeah, I think you said I think it, was it was six, six. are going in and six more going in. Tuition that we're paying? Well, yeah. on the average. You're probably in the 18 to 18, 19, yeah. 18 to 19 thousand range. The other, it, it, the situation we, at our last meeting we talked about will look better in two years because we will be graduating, graduating a, class, a class, smaller class. We yeah. had a large number of kids choose Hanover. So you, yeah, cause that's right. You had a two-year anomaly trend, where a lot of kids went to Hanover. The trend is is good, <laughs> but for the next year, it's just the numbers are just really right. tough. Next year, you have one or two kids going to Hanover. The rest are right. traditionally going to Hartford or places that are a lot cheaper than Hanover. Hanover's like in the 20, 20, 20 So this is dollars. this is the numbers right here. So what I what I did was I took the FY, I got the first semester bills from the schools, and I knew it was going to 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade. So over here you have the schools, and over here. These are the totals. So the graduating class is 33. The incoming class, the eighth graders that are leaving, are 38. Okay? So you can see from the counts, this is tallying up 8 through 11 so that I can figure out what next year's tuitions are going to be. All right? 50% of the kids are going to Hartford now. All right? And you can see the percentages as you go down. Hanover's 20.5, but the trend in Hanover is going down. The trend in Hartford is going up. Windsor's is Windsor's. Stays about the same. Stays about the same. About 10%, no, right. 8 to 10. So, so you, can, can I just ask a math question? So, so if, we're, if we have five more students next year than this year, and we're paying, let's say, 20000 Well, we're paying. So on average 20,000 that's a hundred thousand dollars and yet the high school portions going up 150 more than that well we also are taking I'm taking the FY 19 announced and I'm increasing it by two percent and I'm Across doing the math the for that so yeah it's going up that's a hundred and fifty thousand increase yes yeah. yeah when you do two percent two to percent of that probably in that range. It's more than that. No, it's more than 2%. Yeah. It's got to be more than 2%. <coughs> so I just crunched the numbers. Um, and it's interesting that our high school tuition is 33% of our budget, which while we can complain that tuition goes up and we don't have control over it, um, it's 30% of our student population using 33% of the budget and the high schools tend to be the more expensive students to educate so so 2% so is 52,000 so I'm still missing it's still short so somewhere Kids, do we have in school total? 56. 56. Next, that's the projection for next year. Yeah. No, no, that's K in high school. <coughs> What's in K through eight? Um, yeah. K through eight, we're at like. It also includes, includes the vocational 300, yeah. tuition. 295. Which is another uh, 178,000. So Increase? Yeah, no. there's, there's your 100,000 right. Uh oh. <coughs> What's the increase? Do we know that? Yeah, if the increase is 255. Where is that? It does seem. Total increase in tuition to me is 255. Right. So that's where, where is that coming from? Five extra kids. 2% would be another 50. So we're still $100,000 more than. Because even if every single one of those kids went to Hanover, that's only $100,000. Close to 50 for. The two percent increase plus the fifty for the two percent increase. Where does the so IE where does the IEP service charges land, David? Those would be in the special ed budget. Those so wouldn't be in your okay. So they're yeah. not showing here.
in front of me. Not. So I'm taking the count and I'm tallying up eight through eleven. Okay? And that's seventy-eight. And then I'm carrying all of that same formula down all the way down to that here. Whole column, yeah. And then when I total that column up, I come to 156. Right. And I go down here. And you calculate those tuitions. But I also take out what, how many tech students I have because I only pay a half a tuition for those. So right. That means. Are you pulling just through 11? For the right. coming year, because we're through 11. Because those seniors are gone. <coughs> so I'm taking this number and then I'm dividing the 12 kids that are tech students. Right. And coming up with the 72.24. Okay. Windsor's the same way. The raw number is, 11, uh, is 14, but I've got five tech students, so it brings it down to 11.5. Right, two and a half come off. Right. So in these cases, I'm taking Hartford and Windsor. The, I know what their 20 announced is because they've told me. 17.2 and 17,000. So I'm taking those numbers. I'm taking the 72, and I'm multiplying it by 17.2. This right. times this right. equals that. And that's the same thing I did with Windsor. Same formula, OK? This times the actual announced 17, right? In Woodstocks, what I'm doing in Woodstocks is I'm taking eight students that are going to Woodstock, I'm taking the announced in FY19, I'm adding 2%, and I'm coming up with 142,850,800. And I do that all the way down. Okay? That burns the same way. All right? That same formula in Woodstock. I'll just copy it all the way down. Okay? That comes up to 2,660,075. In tuition. In tuition. And what was last year's tuition total? 2.583. Wait, but in the budget here, we have yeah, written 2839. Eight, right. That's yes, because. Oh, and that's when you yeah. add all of the tech stuff. Yep. The tech stuff in. Yeah. So then I go down here and I tally up all the schools that are considered to be Vermont LEAs Hartford, Windsor, Woodstock, Springfield, and Thetford. All right? And that becomes that number. 1,881,179. And then this becomes the non Vermont LEAs, which is Hanover, KUA, and the Hyde School. Okay? So those three numbers together equal 699,246. And then the private tuition in state is Sharon Academy. Which is the seventy nine six fifty, okay? I add all those together. Those numbers equal this number, okay? Then I take the, the Vermont tuition, the, the vocational tuition of seventy seven. 476, which I used, I did some assumptions on that as well, and I jumped <coughs> this to 100,000, and I come up with 2839.077. So if I did something wrong, I looked at this 150 times, and I can't find an error. 
And you're right. I don't know why. So unless the vocational stuff went up a hundred grand, which no, it didn't either. Like this was like ninety-five thousand in FY19. It could be that the calculation was incorrect last year. Well, we we did have some high school move-ins. I don't yeah, know but that still, we're talking about a math problem. It's not, it's not yeah, actually, it's all yeah. budget. Yeah. Yeah. So the increases from FY19 budgeted yes. to FY20 budgeted? Right, and that's what they, these guys are saying. Right. They're saying, let's take, let's go back up here. So I'm, not, I'm not taking last year's total, oh. subtract the people that are graduating, and add so the people that are coming in. That's, that's what I did. That's, that's what he did. That's what he just did? It's that the seniors are actuals. It's not what you had in your budget last right, year. Right, that's what I'm that's thinking. What yeah. You're 100 grand. You're comparing grand. actuals to budgeted. So, so you must that's have, correct. You must, so the 9th through 12th, there must be five students that move different move. over those four years because you, you're looking at yeah. actuals instead of what you budgeted last year. Yeah. Right. Sorry, yeah. I really started to No, but that's good. And, and by the way, that's no, a phenomenon. That's, that, that's no, a phenomenon. We really trust Ed's numbers now. Yeah. No, no, because <laughs> we've no, all looked at all the calculations. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I yeah. looked at it over and over again because I looked at it and I thought there's something wrong. So th I think that probably means you're going to overspend this year. You have five more we students. Probably are. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know the exact numbers, but I know we've had move-ins yeah, for high school. They come so what we're school. seeing in some of the school districts is we're seeing move-ins for people that don't go to Heartland Elementary School. Correct. They come in after to they take never advantage did. of choice. Yeah, yeah. So we can't predict them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But that's that's what it, it that's got to be what it is. Okay. Yeah. It I think we had a family of three actually, uh, high school students. Um, that rings the bell. That, that moved in. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and, and some other stuff. Good job, Ed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. So Wipe the sweat off. Um, so then, what would that do to your surplus if you have unbudgeted students? Well, well this year's surplus the of might affect spend. this year's surplus. Yeah. What the would it do to the surplus? Well, if we have more kids. Well, first of all, we, uh, you can't carry over a surplus, so you have to do something with right. it. So in FY19, it would mean if you overspent, um, it would fall to the bottom line. So if you overspent in tuition and you underspent somewhere else, it might level it out. But if you... No, that's okay. Or you could end up with a deficit. Or if you end up with a deficit. Right. Now, now, Ed, this is what we did last year. We had an $18,000 deficit last year. Right. So what's that surplus you're talking about from the year before last yeah. year? Mm -hmm. No. No, the deficit, so the was, deficit was in FY17. Sorry, the year before. So, oh, two years ago. Okay, two years ago. So last okay. year we had a surplus of two hundred and four thousand yeah. dollars, which is going to carry into this year, and it's we've used it in the formulas that I've showed you. Right. But um, when we finish FY19, it's yet to be determined where we are. But I. I'd have to look back. You, but you just did financials right. in December. Yeah. And it looked and promising. It, good. it looked pretty good. Yeah. So Be maybe it's because you sometimes you have staffing changes too, right. and so people change benefits, and sometimes it ends up being all the surplus. Maybe put seventy-five in. You could fund and use the difference. You could that way if something big comes up to the school in the next couple of years. How much is in the how much is in the well you can't take that money out once you put it in there. It's gonna be voted so, out. No, it could be yeah. voted out. It could be yeah. voted out. But I'm yeah, saying but if put we put it in the capital, it has to be voted out for capital. You can't right. you can't use it for tuition. tuition. Right. You have to just raise taxes the next year. And then I personally the tax increase this year is so I substantial I think yeah. the subsidy or the, the yeah. surplus yeah. should go yeah. towards yeah. yeah, I think if there's a surplus it should go yeah. Yeah. to tax Exactly. Yeah. That's that's Generally, the way we've thought. Right? Yeah, I don't feel like that's much of a they, question. Because what, what it really means is they sort of overpaid last year. Exactly. Right? exactly. Yeah. And yeah. unless we need something. But we should look at the history of, of contrib right. contributing to the. How much is in the capital reserve? The capital reserve. It was. Uh, we spent it on the library. I want to say. And the valves. <laughs> and the valves. Still around, correct. Still around five hundred thousand. I think it was around five. Fifty. We it spent might a, be a little less than that. It might be around four hundred. Yeah. Is there a capital reserve? It's got the fund for, balances um, right here. <coughs> can you put money away for unexpected expenses for high school tuition or? Okay. Oh, that's what we put the capital reserve together for. Yeah. But we're you can't. Because you can only spend that. Well, I know. Money. I know. It's only for the dollar, but we did that yeah. because every time we turned around, we're borrowing money and paying interest. To pay, yeah. No, so we used, we used to just add extra students in the budget. If right, we thought exactly. that, that was going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So we've heard of students that are showing up for next year? I think some showed up for this year, okay. actually. So they Just for high school. Yeah. They, they so they're included in here, though. Yeah. They're included. And so we yes. don't know who's going to show up next year. Yeah. Correct. Right. Eighth grader right now, that may change. Yeah. And it's a phenomenon in, in both Weathersfield and Hartman. People sometimes move in for the high school choice. Mm -hmm. right. Currently, the balance is three hundred and sixty-six thousand two hundred and forty-seven dollars and two cents. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not as much. So it's, it's not as much. Coming down. It's coming down. Right. Uh, are there are there any? Does Heartland have any other fund balances? They don't have like. There's no rainy day fund. There's no tax stabilization fund. Um, Those they voted the to use the tax, uh, the rainy day fund. We got rid of them. Yeah. yeah. Did did we use it all last year? No, not all of it. Because after they designated the amount, we got. Uh, Thanks. Thanks for coming. Have a nice evening. Take care. You too. This is the deficit offset, is what we called it. Oh, so the five hundred fifty-eight dollars and fifty-eight cents. Mm -hmm. That was the interest that came in oh, after. after. Mm -hmm. So we transferred the amount that you designated. Can we transfer that to the Capital Reserve Fund? <laughs> yeah. Can you? Can you? Yeah, you could. I mean, like, it it there's no done. point. Right. Does that have to be voted on? It would have to be voted on. Yeah. It's oh probably not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Only because the auditors will say, whoa, whoa, whoa. You whoa, 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 can't whoa, whoa. just do that, Ed. I know. I would do it tomorrow. I know, because this seems a little stupid. Well, can you do with it? Just leave it there? Well, I mean, I'm pointing it out to you guys to use the term. At some point, you need to do something. Well, it's called like deficit this. offset. So, as long, as long as we avoid a deficit. More than a $600 deficit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we could use it for deficit offset, I guess. Do we have to have voter approval to use it for deficit offset? But you don't have. You don't, have, don't a, have a deficit. You don't have a deficit yet. Yeah. The name right. was basically, it could have been a rainy day fund, it could yeah. have been whatever. Yeah. What did yeah. it use for? Sometimes is just they call it To have money in there in case you needed it to buy down right. your tax rate. Right, I'm just thinking like you long could just, term. You could put it into the, I could put it in as a local revenue for this year. And we have to no, tell the taxpayers or you just can put no, it in? No, I can just do that. It's going, it's the same thing. Because it was a prior year balance. You didn't yeah. vote that in. Right. You did have a separate article to vote it into that fund. Oh, into the rainy day fund? Yeah. In, into yeah, this. I, I don't know without voter approval. No, then you'd have to have a yeah. do away right. with that fund. You can't. No, you Zero can't. it out. You would have to get the okay. voters to, to do that. To right, well, exactly. we're going to visit that another day. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I'm not sure you want to confuse this I don't want to create any five hundred and fifty eight. Exactly. <laughs> Just want to make it go away. without explaining that Exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so I feel like we've got the big picture. Um, I think we need to decide on what we want to do about food, and I think, um, I don't know, Beth, if you want to explain it, or if you want me to take a stab at it. The, the only other thing I want to, just before we get into the food piece, uh, and again, this is not to, not to overemphasize this, but again, part of, and, I, I, and, and I'm asking Karen and Ed and I are going to try to run some numbers around. I, I have these numbers. This is what she presented on the 19th. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I know, and I wrote, I've done a draft of. So what you can I see in 2014, we had 152 IPs. Again, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm just explaining yeah. why, why we are where we are. We have an incredibly. Across, For the whole SU? Across the SU. That's across the SU. Mm -hmm. The we top have, part is. Yeah. Right. This is you by That's now. you right 14, there. 14, 46, 18, you, you, 80. You've doubled your IEPs. Yeah. You've doubled your case management. You have probably, I'm gonna, how many BIs do we have? Behavior interventionists. Three. Oh, you three. have that here too. Yeah, three. So yeah. the three, three. the so early childhood special education, what's that? That's your, that shows up in the early that's childhood. That's your preschool, the kids the are in your. Right, and what she's but that's showing special education for specifically those kids. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because they're a different budget number. Yeah. Has Weathersfield also doubled? Uh, pretty close, yeah. not quite doubled, but it's gone up. Well, we haven't quite doubled either. We've gone up by more than they have. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. You've got the largest 
free and reduced population in this. Right now, you're the highest free. Which is a 180 from where it was five years ago. Yeah, that's been huge. Yeah, Heartland's seen an incredibly changing demographic. Weathersfield has some, but you probably more than Weathersfield. But we can and just keep scrolling down to show you where this is. You know, we have a larger student population too. Right. So you have a population of. Three almost, change, right? Almost 300. So, Which as a shy. percentage, <coughs> you've got quite a few kids that are on IEPs. Now, is that. Um, that's K to 8. I mean, K to 12. That's K to 12. That's K to 12. Right. Yeah. So, that's 80 out of 500. And, yeah. Right. Uh, including our high school. Right. That's a good point. Population. So, you can see West Windsor's 14. Look wow. what happened to them. Wow. Yeah. They tripled. Wow. Um, and I actually talked to Elizabeth. They had zero. Like seven point. years ago, seven years they like, had zero like, IEPs yeah, in their school. <laughs> maybe one, but, yeah. but yeah. so yeah. I mean, they've really, really gone up. Sixty-seven to eighty-three. Yeah. Well, some of it is the changing demographics. Some of it is teachers are more equipped to. Yeah. I was going to say, how are you? They know what to look for, and they're getting more training around, mm -hmm. you know, kids and their needs, and so they're better at identifying um, sooner, I think, right. than they used to be. So the population. The, the all of special education is done based on assessment. Mm -hmm. So every one of these employees that we'll submit through now are all paid by the supervisory union. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I can tell you 40, there used to be 12 special ed paraprofessionals. And that was only like three or four years ago. Now we have 40. Heartland's got 11, Weathersfield's got 8, West, West Windsor's got 5 paraprofessionals. And Windsor's got 16. By the way, 60 kids. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And one full-time case manager. And now we get into behavioral interventionists. Hartland's got four. <coughs> Weathersfield's got five. Windsor, West Windsor's got two. And Windsor's got three. We have three. Well, yeah, that's what they're saying. One of those, I, wish, I think that got reversed. Oh, okay. but, yeah. These numbers came directly from, from Karen. From Karen. And then down here. So one belongs to the SU, three belong to us? We only have three. I think it's the other way around. You have three right. special NBIs, right? We have three special NBIs. <coughs> yeah. okay. I think that, that just got reversed. Yeah. Okay. okay. And one. then these are, the, uh, these are the additional people that you have that a percentage of these people are used by your. Mm -hmm. your so you've got two SLPA, speech, language, pathology assistants which is a licensed position. Then you've got a speech language pathologist. And then you've got contractual agreements for speech language pathologists. So you've got, what is that, 4.25 for speech and language. You've got a home to school coordinator, a behavior analyst, a school psychologist, an occupational therapist, and a CODA. And CODA stands for? It's uh, an assistant a, occupational right. therapist. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then. I don't know what it means. These are placements that are outside of the schools. Wow. Hartland's got eight kids. Six are in high school that aren't in high school. They're not in a traditional high school. They're in an alternative. Specialized school. placement. Right. right. And two elementary schools. Weathersfield has 10. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. With a, with a considerably smaller student population. Hmm. Yeah. That's right. wow. But I think. I, what we said at Weathersfield last night, looking at those numbers, and, and we, we didn't have the exact numbers last night, but... That's but why I brought them to me. Thank you. Karen presented this. Right now, your special education assessment, I think, is 835000 I am willing to bet you, if you added up the salaries of your 11 paraprofessionals, your four case managers, all those speech-language, all your high school excess costs... 895000 What's that? I, I'm sure you're going to, you, you would, if you were doing your special ed locally, given that changing demographic, oh, yeah. you would be, would be, you'd be way oh, over 800. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and my only point is, I think, you know, it, it was wise that we decided to go equalize pupil, yep. you know, because kids move in and out. We're all sharing it. Some years it goes way up, some years it goes way mm -hmm. down. But we've kind of stabilized that. Uh, a, a little bit, but, but, the, but the bottom line is the trend is up and up significantly. But what um, I think Karen had said this is that the, um, I think it was the 2016 budget is closer for special ed costs to this number. The actual. No, to, to what 
what she was saying is that we'd underspent for the last couple of years and under budgeted. Yes, exactly. Under budgeted. Um, yeah, yeah, we'd under budgeted. Sorry, not underspent. We'd under budgeted for right. the last couple of years. Yeah, we and she was saying deficits. that this budget returns us back to the 2016 right, to what we're funding spending, level. Right. We should, yeah. you know, yeah. again, barring a major catastrophe, we should. Do we know how these numbers compare to other districts across the state? Well, yeah. it all, well, the way no, Karen. No, it does matter. It's a good question. It does, but we, it also doesn't because Karen calculates the numbers based on the needs of the specific the students right. and their individual IEPs. Mm -hmm. So it's fair to say spending is going up in this category across, uh, across the state. Yeah. It's, it's, it's what the, 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 the staffing patterns related to special, special education, I think, are driving some of those costs that you know the state's trying to get a handle on. And it's one of the reasons why they're going with a different funding formula two years from now that we instead of this r reimbursement model that we've been using forever mm -hmm. we're going to go to a block grant model where you're going to be able to use that money for more early intervention it's not going to have to be dedicated just to a student who's been identified the idea is that sometimes we get so sacrosanct and so parochial about a specific disability that we we don't see the forest through the trees and exactly and and i and i yeah, think it's a you know it's a it, it's costing us money because identified then put the service with it then and that service you know it's it's yeah are there any drivers that can be e exactly addressed in different right. ways exactly I think, I think one thing that they got um, the just rushed through and five minutes ago is when christine said that um professionals are becoming better at identifying and and i don't doubt that and and that should we shouldn't um, underestimate that, that the good that we're trying to yes. do, mm -hmm. and we're trying to not have kids leave our school district and, and be uh, you know, adrift. Right. Well, I think else. that that shows and so up. We really need to identify as fast as possible. I think that shows up when you look at the out of district placements. Right. Yeah. Because we've got, you know, we only have eight in the whole school but six of those are high school or in the whole right. district six of them are high school and so what that's telling me is that if we can identify earlier try to keep the kids home we're we're we can keep the kids doing we're already doing, doing it, doing it. i mean and that's such a small sample size yeah. but that's what those numbers tell me yeah, that's is that we are successfully keeping the elementary kids in the building yeah we want them here yeah um, that's our goal but i think that th i think th that data that ed just showed that that longitudinal data would be good to show maybe at town meeting. I think people need to see, because mm -hmm. I think if you don't work in the schools I in this upper valley or Absolutely. in this community, right. then you don't understand, understand the changing demographic. If you're a bank if a person or you're a, not to knock any of those professions, but you're driving off to, you know, Dartmouth professor or whatever, I mean, you may, you may not. Be careful, David. I know, excuse me. You may, <laughs> you may not know exactly <laughs> what's going on yeah. in the schools. <laughs> I mean, one question I have is I look at that too, and I, I'm just I'm trying to think from the point of view of a taxpayer. You know, a lot of those costs are mental health costs, mm -hmm. like a huge yeah. percentage mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To what extent is our healthcare system paying for for any of that, and yeah. can we explain that to our taxpayers? I mean, I know there is there's Medicaid money that pays for some of those services, and there yeah. there is yeah. there is federal and state you know healthcare system. <coughs> funds. Um, and I, I, that might be a useful thing to be able to, to talk about a little yeah. bit too. Because some of that's being reimbursed, right? Or is that all the non-reimbursable? That's all the non-reimbursables. I mean, so that yeah. raises We the take the reimbursements off the top of off that. The so top. that's yeah. the non-reimbursables, mm -hmm. right? Wow. Right, that's our share. Right. That, that, right. that, because on top of that 800 and something thousand you're paying, the state's reimbursing us a certain, a certain amount of money too, yeah. So. Oh, so are, are budget at that high, but we, we didn't can use go it. to get some of the the money. I mean, it's, I know it's a very that's a very naive sounding question, but it, just when you look at that, it's so much of it is is healthcare right. costs. That's and a that's a legislative issue, don't you think? We, I mean, the mental health. I, thing, yeah. Yeah. But oh it's yeah. Something it to is. talk to our taxpayers about, and perhaps to be agitating for, and you know, not I. I mean, I and I will always defend doing. Providing well, we those services in the right. school. This is the place to do it. We have to right. do it. We I have to hit those never, kids when they're young. I would never want us to stop doing it in the schools. Mm -hmm. Right. But um, right. state resources. 
the, the other part I of actually this mentioned that to our legislators yeah. this morning. The other part of this that's more political than it is, you know, financial is that when you think about it, that special education legislation, that was a federal authorization, right? And mm -hmm. and the federal government, you know, back when it authorized the, the original ninety four one forty two promised to increase that funding over time so that they, but but it, it really it never, never did. did. It never it's did. never gone much it stays under about ten percent. The state right. does pretty well. They they give us almost fifty percent, but the feds have given us yeah. virtually nothing. And again, that's against it's just stretching that's political, it's setting priorities. But we don't have a funding stream to deal with our neediest yeah. population yeah. really other than Medicaid and those traditional funding streams. Isn't there something afoot that to, to take something away from somebody and give it to the AOE th th for that? I don't know. Yeah, at the state at the state level or at the federal yeah, level? Yeah, the state level. So, I just remember reading something about there is a component to this that is regulated by another agency and this AOE is clamoring to get that. The other thing I'd point out here is the special ed funding mechanism, the one that is based on reimbursement it, I've talked to you about it, 56 point whatever percent, and then excess, you know, extraordinary over 90 percent. You know, get all of that. At the end of the 2020, that's going away. Right. That's what so the funding doing. formula will be completely different. Mm -hmm. And what they'll do is they're going to come up with some kind of a projection based on prior actuals that they get because I submit special ed expenditure reports to them three times a year. Well, they haven't said they're going to do that yet. Oh, they're going to do that. You think? They are definitely. It is. Okay. It's, a, it's a law. They're going to do it. It's a block grant. No, I know it's a block grant, but they haven't said how they're going to do the formula yet. That's got oh, this huge study committee. The no, they don't yeah. have the formula. Yeah. Right, but that's, the speculation is it's going to be a three-year look back, running average, which your actuals, which is kind of dangerous because what we found and what prompted us to go to a formula that's based on equalized pupil is that one, one or two students moving in can really have a huge effect on your special ed spending. Yes. So, so I, I'm sorry. I feel like I really blurred the lines between board business and public participation, but <laughs> I hope you don't mind me asking a question, another question. So when we used to be faced, so I'm a former board member, as is Tom, and when we were faced with this kind of situation, we knew that the town was going to want to know, and somebody asked the question, how do we compare to others? And mm -hmm. I know that the state calculates um, does all of the numbers looking at SLPs and OTs per equalized pupil in schools and you can go right on the Vermont Web Department of Education website and look up they have spreadsheet after spreadsheet of all of this stuff and I don't know if they do special ed though like specifically but we used to go and grab those numbers and be able to show that for schools our size we were mm -hmm. either at that target, over it, or under it, and be able to explain mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And that helps people. So if, if you have someone at the SU that's going through and creating IEPs and assigning resources, a large part of the public is not going to believe that that's being done objectively. Mm -hmm. And they're going to think that you've got five more people down there than you really need, and that those right. salaries all add up, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so this is, so, your, your way, one way of explaining it is to show that you're following best practice and that you're in the middle of the road in terms of the resources that you're providing. Mm -hmm. And we found that to be very helpful in our presentations over the years. Um, but I, again, yeah, that's a great I, I, I don't know if they do it for special ed, but that, that data sure must your, exist. Your, your SU person must be able to find information about that and, and be able to justify mm -hmm. the level of effort that you have. Um, and if you are over, then that's a whole other story. But, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I think that that's the kind of information, those are the questions you're going to be asked. Yeah. With an increase like that, a $250,000 increase in special ed costs, um, with no increase in population. Um, well, but with a dramatic increase in the number of students. Population. Which is, which everybody in Heartland will tell you is a subjective evaluation mm -hmm. that somebody yeah. decides that that the CLA that you mean or the or the uh, no the, the, all the, those the oh the IEP stuff yeah. right, 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 right that we went up 11 students but we're going up $250,000 that's like a 30% increase in the budget for 
uh, a ten percent increase in students. I know if Karen was here, she would she would firmly say it's not subjective. Yeah. So that you know. needs to come out at your school board meet at your there's town meeting. There's a with checklist that with they have data. to go through to. Yeah, and the best way to do that would be to see if there's data, and I'm sure it exists, that sort of looks at special ed costs uh, per equalized pupil, right? So you, you can see wh what I'm hearing right. you say is, so we can see where we fit right. into the pack. Right, if our SU is spending twice as much on per per, per equalized pupil, right. that needs an IEP as everybody else, then the town has cause for concern. Right. But if we're spending the same amount for student that needs the help, then it's an easier sell. David, is that something that you can it's ask Karen to look I up I just for wrote me? it down. Because yeah, I think that she probably has quicker She has access, access to, that. To, be, to be able to get at that data. And I know that the state does do this analysis because you can be identified as what's called a high spending district in right. special education. Okay. We, we were dubbed that three or four years ago. We haven't in the last couple of years, so I would I would say we're probably more in the middle of the pack, but uh, that data does exist. In this data That's good. is something that the state gives us that compares us to the same cohort. Right, we used to show that every yeah. day. Right. Yeah. I used to have but you can, can read, you send me special that? education expenditures vary substantially from district to district and year to year. They're Therefore, they have been excluded right. from these figures. Right. Now, this is supposed to be able to supposed to go into your town report but because of this the timing of when I get this and when you guys have to get your town R report, report printed printed it's a handout at the school board <coughs> at the meeting. That's so do you have that yet or no no it's 2016 usually comes yeah late. Okay. but we could bring it with us this is the only I, I have another um, a, a, a other version, yeah, that's really version. Helpful. but this is the quickest one I could find. But they're all the same. They take a look at your cohort. Just that meeting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, because nobody comes to that meeting. Yeah, like we need to be using yeah. the serves and yeah, figure out ways to yeah to list get serves. the info out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still think that goes into it. Um, and what do you use? You use what's around here? No, what what what, uh, what where does this get shown? This this is CATV. CATV. White River. Yeah. The other thing we've done in the past with SAPA and with Windsor on Air is we've the board you chair know. and I and you know we just do a little <coughs> twenty minute little segment. Talk. I don't know how many people watch. Right. This, but you could email it to the yeah. listener. Mm -hmm. I mean, we show them on Windsor TV too. We send them to them. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's but, Woodstock, I mean. but in these trying times, I agree. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. PR and data gathering that, that needs to happen. That <coughs> I mean, in my opinion, it's what Ed is showing us, or, or in, or excuse me, what you just said a few minutes ago, David, about the auditing. You might say that the state does, and you have not been identified as overspending. Right in the last couple of years. For me, as a school board member, that's a summation that makes that uh, affirms for me that the, that the district is where it needs to be. If, if for instance, we were um, drilling down on one year, maybe it's this year or another year, and found that there was a population or an, an identified population higher than another year, I, I believe that you're, that's getting into, uh, to use, uh, uh, and to illustrate that, perhaps pitchforks and hmm. and and torches territory, where you're trying to adjust the people that come to your town and decide to, Kay. you know. So I you have know. A, you're proposing a yeah. seven percent budget increase, mm -hmm. seven percent, unheard of. So with no changes to programming. So well, there are some. So I I noticed there are some there are some changes uh, here and there. So uh, increases here and there in art and music and a few other things. Instructional education. There's a difference of like one hundred fifty thousand dollars or something. I think those so are all just salary. That was it, so we had to shift how we report. Mm -hmm. and maybe that's it. Like yeah. Yeah. So I added those numbers up too. So I went from category to category and so. Um, but to stick to the special ed analogy, because that's right. where we really so were, because I, I don't want to stay right there, because 
if that if we are going to if we were to to pander to some uh, some very very concerned discussion at a town meeting that this is being over identified for instance we we really get into a uh, an arena where um, well, number one we're not educators we're school board members and we need to leave that to the people who we hire to do those jobs but it really it really is uh, I just would say it's unsavory so you're saying specifically special education yeah I mean we were talking about yeah. that yeah. Oh, for example yeah. one of the years that we were labeled a high spending district uh, you know it was due to really some very identifiable families <coughs> that had four and five kids that were drawing exorbitant resources so I think that's part of what Scott's talking about which is a little different than, than yeah. having to yeah, well that's it what is, we're it is. And, and it's not pandering to answer a question that a taxpayer has no. no matter what program it is and while we can agree in theory that we need to take care of all the children here the folks that are paying for that have the right to ask are we doing the same thing as everybody else or overspending mm -hmm. so I, I don't think that that's pandering and you have a lot of people seven percent is a uh, I, I've never heard of a seven percent increase in town I think you're you're gonna have trouble passing yeah. this budget and uh, you know so an eighty six thousand dollar increase in your PE line well this is so let me let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's talk through this, this. A lot of these things because well these things. aren't actually increases so what happened is if you look at so like if you look at the district wide yeah we used to include PE district wide and we're no longer allowed but, to do that. But if you look at the two lines, both in district wide and middle school, that added up to that other line, there's an increase in that number. So but I went through and checked all of them. But there's no increase there's to program. No there's no in there's no, no changes to program. I have not increased anything in this building. So position wise, we had to reallocate where the funds are, um, how we report. So we used to report district wide and then and now we have to take those district wide Split employees into elementary and, and secondary but if you right. look and maybe it's a mistake in the the way that they're split but if you take those two lines and add them up it looks like there's an increase if you compare the district last year's district wide numbers yeah. to this year's proposed numbers in elementary and middle school there appears to be an increase there and so so that's something so worth checking too yeah. So you're saying all the places it's been zeroed out, if you accommodate for that, or... or if you go to where they're you added back, below and right. compare them, right. it appears that there's an increase in several of those areas. So, and can I, I'll just say one more thing. So in years where this board has been faced with uncontrolled increases, such as special education and your high school tuition, the board would take special care to to compensate for that elsewhere in the budget where possible and, and we are still hurting from reduce, doing that last year reduce programming we did that last year and we have not recovered and we feel like as a board I'll speak because we talked about this in our last executive session there is nowhere that we can cut now that will not impact students directly right. so and that's a big problem for where the, we are right the now. budget went up last year more than no, no, down. Down. it went down. Taxes, taxes went gone on. up, but that's the state formula. We kept the, bu the budget was kept. Oh, 18 to 19 total did go down. Yeah, we cut programming last year. Yeah, um, we have not increased programming. I'm not sure what you're referring to in the increase. I know district wide it's dropped quite a bit. Um, if you look at the bottom sure. line, because the other places it increased because we reallocated yes. where we where we um, just code teachers and their percentages right time right. with students but, um, but yeah I mean, the budget is up five hundred and seventy one thousand dollars and if you look at between the two hundred and uh, the two hundred and sixty special ed and two two fifty five for uh, tuition increases and then the, you know there are a few other things that were out of our control like the the technology and we'll be talking about the food service and there are a few smaller things but but really those two items account for that increase it is the vast majority of it yeah. mm -hmm. um, but there is there is there's probably a couple hundred thousand dollars in here that I picked up on in a half hour this evening that and every penny counts 40,000 is a penny on the tax rate about, about right yeah. but there's not a hundred thousand in changes yeah. Christine it's hasn't changed anything. You haven't added anything. I mean, there are staff increases. I have no, I mean, that's a contractor. You know. There's an 11.8% um, increase in health insurance. 
But I was just taking a look at, you were talking about, co uh, you were talking about ath athletics, is that what you were saying? Phys ed. Phys ed. So PE, so the two PE lines, 64,000 or something in the first, the previous year? Yeah, 64,824. And if you look at the PE, the two PE lines, oh, I don't have the same 2190, it's, no. um, oh no, I'm looking at the wrong thing. District-wide from last year. It's zeroed out in district-wide and it's allocated under so elementary and Secondary. So let's go to right. PE so under elementary. Oh, but yeah, yeah, so we've got 80 under elementary PE, and it was only district wide. It was only 64 last year. But but look, and then under, there's um, another one under the middle school. There's more under the middle, under school. middle school. And then we have another middle 70. School. School education at 70, and under the uh, so that's a total of 150. PE is 80. So it's 150 total, and last year it was 64. Right. Ed. That's elementary. So that's that's, that's an increase. It's not well, an increase not. in programming. It's it's we, somewhere else in the budget. We didn't right. increase. We have not that program at all. Right. It's exactly the same as it was. Yeah. yeah. I'd have to look at. So it's it's however it got allocated out. And co-curricular academics is of twenty six thousand. Um, your improvement of instruction is up fifty five by fifty five thousand. Media is up twenty two thousand. It's re they're really not up. I, I promise you, they're just they're right. just. They so well, they'll be up so some we, because of right. salary of course, increases of course, yeah. and of benefit course, and increases. Are, but we need I to mean, explain those that. things. Yeah. But so this maybe is, the numbers aren't right. Is what this I'm, is um, it's possible physical ed. That the, it's, it's in physical the ed is up. She's saying this is the totals for phys ed. Sixty-four thousand. Tap that with two fingers. Yeah. One fifty-one to sixty-four thousand. Well, that's. But that's there's no new but there's no, no there's no we didn't change. hire anybody. So yeah. Yeah. Where's like the money <laughs> coming from? Don't we just have two people? In fact, yeah. In fact, we hired one probably at a. And I believe that these numbers are right because it makes sense with the total. So that'll come with the salary yeah. and benefit uh, spreadsheet. I mean, sixty-four seems a little low. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. Previous years, two but somebody does that on count their insurance? We had a maternity leave, right? But that wouldn't that wouldn't no, that, that, wouldn't that, that, that wouldn't impact that wouldn't impact it. No, I think what you're saying is we, you know, maybe we double counted something when we had, because we, because of this new finance system that we had to go with, we had to move a lot of stuff well, around. Well, right, and so it's so easy to, to, to double move. put something in two spots, and so. Right, that's a good point. Yeah, the phys ed is a good. Um, I don't think we can show this yeah, publicly. Yeah. Show Technically, that. it's all yeah. public information. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Even believe it or not, it is. Yeah, which would be up there. So it looks like there's two teachers. One is uh, two phys ed teachers. Yeah. That makes up the fifty-four thousand that you, you see. You mean the sixty-four? No. Where are you? Right here. Okay, got it. If you go to here, that's elementary, right? There's that same 54, 153. Okay. Okay. And so wait, that means they're both in elementary. No, because. Well, hold on. She's, that's a portion. Oh, 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 gotcha. Okay, I see. We have to designate how much okay. time they spend in elementary and secondary. And when you go to middle. Secondary. There they are. 52. 52, 7, 51. Right. And if you Up go top. back to here and you go down to middle. But where is the rest? 52, 7, 51. Wait, how do you even add 54 plus 14 and get 80? Well, you're adding, well, you're adding all the oh, benefits. Oh, there is more. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Benefits and whatnot. So. So 80 and 70 is the 150. So where, why, and so. Why did we only show 64 the year before? Yeah. Because maybe that was only looking at the elementary school. No. I think no. it was zeroed out last year. I think you added a position. 
No, we did not. We no, did not. I've only had two gym teachers for a long time. Yeah. Can you go back to the spread to, to I mean, the salary and benefit spreadsheet from the year before? Health. Like a right, portion that's of their this is a good example. We might we can look at it closely. Yeah, because yeah, health services was one hundred and two thousand. So we know the one hundred and fifty is right, right? Because that, that those so are the people who are working. Wait, if out. we take health and so let's that's go see what we had deployed last year. What is health? So last year we put uh, this teacher, Angela Henderson Carpenter, uh, she was in regular instruction district wide. Right. And this year we took her salary and oh, we put it that's into where it is. Her out of regular instruction to peak, in the PE. Right. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. That makes sense. Okay. That's probably. You know why? Because what, she that's did. What, that's what happened with the ins instructional coaches some other as things well. Too. The, um, we just and we did shift some things last year to, to make it make See, sense. Where you move stuff. Yeah. So to, com to what happened was the the state at the eleventh hour chose a new vendor for a statewide accounting system. So eighty five percent of the state used Tyler Technologies, and the state in their infinite wisdom picked PowerSchool. So now we've all got to convert to PowerSchool, and. One of the reasons that prompted this change was that the state decided that they wanted to get information directly from our software rather than have us report it. So we used to have to do a staff report every summer. This change is supposed to make it so that the state can go in and grab the data and we've had to go to a unified chart of accounts that the state has designated. And what they've done is they've said, in the past, when we've had music teachers or someone like that, we put them in district-wide because they didn't fit in either elementary or secondary, or in Windsor's case, high school. So we put them in there, and they'd go across all those grade levels. Well, the state said, no, you can't do that anymore. You have to designate a percentage for each one. So what I had, when I took a look, I gave this spreadsheet to uh, Christine. Now, Christine's first year of building a budget is basically this year. Mm -hmm. You inherited last year's budget. Right. This is the, so all of this, how this was allocated, was based on the old chart of accounts and on the preferences of the principal before Christine. So what I did was I said to Christine, take a look at this and tell me if you can designate where these people actually work, because I've got to take them out. I can't have them in here anymore. So what we had to do was, in her case, I don't know what she even does, right? I do. Does. So <laughs> she said to me, well, she's phys ed, I'm going to put her in phys ed. You get down here, all of these positions in here had to be reconfigured. So some of what you're talking about is going to show up when you do those comparisons, because we've moved people from somewhere else and put them into where they're supposed to be. That district wide is a good example. I think what 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 um, um, Nick Nicole right yeah, Nicole said earlier is true. When you take a look at it here, overall, when you take a look at wages in the aggregate, in the aggregate it's up 40. And again, 11.8% of that is in health insurance. Okay. Well, that's under benefits. Uh, benefits. That's I, I, yeah, I'm Correct. sorry, benefits. And contracted wage increases. Right. Contract okay. This, yeah. this so could be... We've got a built-in number there. Right. So we're in a contract negotiation year. And again, I just mentioned what that might be. The assessments we've been through, um, maintenance and repair, transportation, all of those are contractual. So there are increases built into them. The tuition we went through. And then down here, what we were talking about was the SU now does all of the equipment purchasing for technology. So that's why you're seeing the decline here of $38,000. So we took it out of your local budget and we put it at the SU and assessed it in here. But I, I think all that said, I think the point is well taken, that especially in the places that are zeroed out, 
-hmm. you know, for us over the next month. month to have a good sense of much. I mean, I, I, you know, you, you hope you won't get into that kind of minutia, but I right. think, I think when, when you've got a seven percent increase as it was stated, oh, people tend to get a little deeper into the minutia. You know what I mean? So they, they right. They, a couple of years ago, there was an argument on our list server about we shouldn't have high school choice because it costs more, blah, 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 blah. And that was all on the listserv. So I put a counter argument with the number out there. Right. So, so those people do pay attention. They do have those conversations. Right. And mm -hmm. if they don't mm -hmm. have the right numbers, they're going to have the wrong conversation. Yeah. Right. They're going to be thinking that you're doing something different than what you're really doing. I don't know so how to... I do this. That, that could be tricky in terms of all the moves we make. You could just see with that one example mm -hmm. how, mm -hmm. you know, it's regular ed, back to PE, back to health. That That's going to get tricky, but <clears throat> that's why in the end when we presented it overall, was we did it more or less in the aggregate because that pulls all the salary data right. <coughs> for FY19 compared to FY20. You so, know, so, so we're going to so have to put a footnote keep, on here. Well, we used to keep notes and we had slides that would explain. And right. Not all. So we didn't always show all the slides unless right. somebody asked. But you're ready. Question. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ready. yeah no. We and that's knew, what we've done we previously too. And, and it is. It's possible that no one will look at the budget like I just looked at it. Yeah. Because I used to live and breathe this thing. And right. So, so your the, presentation but, was. But people will, especially yeah. with this increase, I think you're going to get a lot more scrutiny than you have in the right. past. And 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 the, the and saying and I I think you're they're going to ask about reducing Pro even programming, programming within the staffing. school. I think right. you're going to be asked that question, and that's that's a tough one. We had to cut four or five positions Position. that we did not want to cut, but right. because we had huge special education costs. And right. had, we had a couple of years where we had tons of people go to Hanover all of a sudden. And so right. we had to make up. those tough calls in the school. I think the it problem is, is that we've been making those tough calls for yeah. the last couple of years. And we're now at a point where... Historically, I mean, where did you tend to go? Did you tend to go to, to the support staff? Or did you actually look at teachers and combining classes? I mean, what both? both. I did both. Support. Yeah, I mean, we combined a class last year and got rid of a the teacher thing, and a para last year. I know because I've seen so many there is they, on the municipal side, they've been talking about with their limited resources and what they can do. Mm -hmm. Their budget is also going up mm -hmm. this year quite a bit compared to previous years. So the, the overall tax increase in it's town gonna is going to be a lot. It's going to be mm -hmm. tough. And so you know, mm -hmm. just as a warning that, you know, it could be tough for, yeah. for everyone. My first year on the school board, we had to go through three budget votes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was really That's unpleasant. Yeah. But so I think as long as you had the information, because you, uh, and, and focus on those areas where there's a, a large differential and you can talk about it right. and be prepared for it. I always wonder though, where's the venue to do that? Because you two are the, really, Public participation <coughs> between, as you guys right. well know, even when you have a public yeah, meeting, right? No, I, right. Just, I hate it when it's on Monday night at seven thirty to start a meeting. Yeah. I don't. So the other I, thing is, we all know too, the listserv at times can be very, very negative. Right. Forum as well. Yeah. I was going to try to put together a spreadsheet to put to highlight some of these specific issues in the report. So we've typically done a two-page report, and I'm going to bump so it up to and three. And the, the previous year's reports are still using stuff that was in our slides that we had, in, and they did the same sort of stuff. Judy Callens and I used to go sit at the diner. Mm -hmm. We did we went and ha did a recording a couple times and had it shown and made it available here in the school for people. <coughs> we had special meetings. We had a budget walkthrough on a Saturday morning. That <laughs> was remember that yes. we went line by. So oh we God, did, did like, really? yeah, line we invited line. the public to come with us and great. do line by line stuff because it was a really tough times. And yeah, we you had a few years there. It was yeah. not, it was really yeah. unpleasant. And um, we were faced with doing some things that we really didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but so, yeah, and uh, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe people aren't going to blink at this. But, you know, for if you're talking about an increase at the town and this, yeah. It's a, you know, for a three hundred thousand dollar house, you're, you're talking about six or seven hundred dollars oh. increase in taxes between the two. Between things. the two people. That's two really big. So. 
I think we also maybe need to really sort of craft the narrative so that we give some, we give the context. Background. And, and the cuts is, that we've done previously. The cuts we've done previously, but also that this is, I mean, as we said, with the tuition, this is not a permanent situation. That it's, mm -hmm. it's going to trend down in the next year or two. Yeah. Um, and with special ed, the, the new law is coming in in, in 2020, and obviously there are huge challenges. For the 2021 budget? That is projected to, 21 to, to budget bring 20. special ed spending down. down across the state. Now, whether or not... It's unpredictable. I, mean, I, wonder, uh, I, I wonder what yeah. people will do <laughs> with less. People are going to be trying to, to do the same More with less, less money, and that's kind of terrifying. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um, but it will go down. And, and so I think maybe providing some context <coughs> yeah. so that people don't think we're, you know, we're at this number. And, it's so they go up again. And year. again, going back yeah. to what the state publishes, anybody can go to the State Department of Education and look at, if, like we cut a vice principal position and had a half of the dean of students. We, so because we saw that per, on that per pupil, we were getting criticized for having twice as many administrators right. as everybody else or more art teachers than anybody else. And so we went eventually and looked at those numbers and tried to target, not perfectly, but be in the ballpark um, where we were. And at that time, we were in our category, one of the highest spending per pupil in, in our category. And now we're middle of the pack. Right. Mm -hmm. And so those are the kinds of things you can go pull out that public data and say, this is where we sit. And it's a pretty reasonable place. Yeah. Right. And if it's not, you're going to have to do something about it. Right. Probably. But um, well, we've been trying to be really responsible and. I also think we need to make sure we year. reflect on what is our free and reduced population been looking like over the last five years. What was yeah. it like when you guys were here versus changed. what we're dealing with right now? The community the is definitely changing and the need is significantly higher. Yeah. And so trying to have that, like, you know, try, trying to get that narrative out there that our, just our general community need the other is increasing and that's this is we are a public institution yeah. to serve that need the other interesting thing with that changing demographic yeah. that also impacts the way people look at these budgets is that as you've increased your free and reduced lunch population right you've also increased the percentage of people who are eligible for the rebate on their property tax so you've got a lot of people yeah. when you show these numbers their tax is not going yeah, at all yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact so some people are paying nothing and Which, which as a person that pays full tax, I, know. I really <laughs> do not like that argument. I think justifying I an increase in a budget by saying only some of you have to pay for it yeah. is yeah. really not appropriate. Yeah. I so I I'll, and I stood up the last time I heard that and objected yeah. to that because because there are a lot of community members that are paying full tax and it's it's it says here right. you do it right let everybody else not worry about it and go ahead and authorize the increases, somebody else will take care of that burden. And but who my else, only point was not to justify it, but just to? say what Where else is that money supposed to be coming from? Like that's, I mean, if we had that magic bucket, then it would, we would use it. So that's, I mean, I just, yeah, I get it Yes. Yeah. I do think explaining how things are different now. Yeah. We used mm -hmm. to do, ch you know, trend charts and show all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. I think that mm -hmm. in starting by framing that conversation might be very helpful. Mm -hmm. I also think just the discussion of, like, the number of students that are dealing with trauma, you know, here within mm -hmm. the school, I mean, that wasn't even a discussion five years ago. Right. And the level of that instruction that has had to change Should just to deal with that population yeah. is huge. I mean, my son's class right now is kindergartners, what, six, seven kids? in a class of what, 17? Extreme needs. Yeah. So it's extremely, it's just in. We're in a different place than we were even when my son started here five years ago. Yeah. It's a very different place. I think it's, I think it's wise, yeah. wisely spoken though. Yeah, we, we need to provide. You no, 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 I think you're really good. Wisdom is, is really, really powerful. Powerful. and it's hugely yeah, it's informative. Really it's really helpful. And we haven't heard what's happening yeah. on the town side either. Or maybe, I mean, you will may all know. Yeah. But they I said it last night. Did they did? Yeah. How much yeah. are they going up? So they're looking at a, a tax increase too then. They are. Sue, do you have your old um, presentations anymore? Sure. Could you just email them to me? Sure. I think we have the template. I think we might. Have We're it. still using that same template. It's a, it's a blue, it's a blue, it's a blue yeah, dark blue. Yep, we have it. But, but if you want to share it with yeah. you. Can you send it to me anyway? 
So sure. Because I think it might have gotten bastardized. In, in, so, in and I'll also send you all those changes that I saw in the budget, just in case somebody else does it. Yeah. So it would be worth so looking great. at each that one. So you can have that yeah. ammo. Right? Yeah. So. Thank I mean, you very much. I mean, we knew that was coming a little bit. Yeah. So yeah I mean, once we saw the special ed, we knew. Right. Yeah. We knew it wasn't yeah. going to be good. Thank you so much, Lewis. Thank, Thank you. Good luck. Thank you for your hard work. I appreciate it. Um, so, to get one item. We're going to get back to food service, right? Yeah. Well, to get one item out of the way, I think the entire surplus needs to go into the budget. And I don't. Is everybody on agreement on that? I guess I, I, I would want to know more about um, what's coming up in capital spending. I mean, we, we were kind of, we have kind of off um, the record, off the plan now. We don't have a current Right, and current so plan. we are putting together a building committee to make another five-year plan. Um, but I, I, given this increase, I don't want to put money away right now. Like, this is not the year to put money away. And we have the 370, so if some, you know, if there's some right. repair that needs to be made, have, right. the 370 is there. It, and Mr. Howes, Mr. I, I've chatted with Mike. I mean, he he, he has um, said the building's in pretty good shape. I mean, there's no worry of something major, but, you know, obviously you never know, know but right. Right. he feels pretty comfortable at this point. And if and we're I think Jim working with Christine, I mean, you, you've been on some regular like painting cycles, and yep. you know, you yeah. do a right. little of that at a time. Right. It, it, right. it makes a big difference. And, yeah. But I, I tend to agree. I don't live down here and pay taxes down here, but I think this would be the year. To, yeah. I mean, it's money that was raised by taxpayers. It's money right. that should, should go, go back to taxpayers. Yeah, and that makes some pretty dramatic change. And that should be high in our presentation. Right. I think is that we're that's our belief that it should go back. And mm -hmm. We're, not, we're choosing not to put it into the capital fund or do other things with it because we, we recognize that this is a tough, a yeah. tough thing to swallow this year. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with all those statements. I think it's just it should also be just as plain to the voters that what, what is the surplus again? Two hundred and four thousand. Mm -hmm. So if you divide that by that forty thousand per penny ratio. You're, you're talking about two and a half cents, which is, oh, okay. I guess, is That's more than that. about five, five yeah. Yeah, two, 240 divided by Oh, excuse me, I was thinking 100,000. Right. Yes, about five. Five, I guess five cents. 100,000 off. Cents. Yeah, I'm 100,000 off. Well, very good. Thank well, you. and if you look at it from another way, it takes our, well, so spending our rate. total, yeah. yeah. so we need to talk about food, because these numbers aren't right without food. I've got him up. Well, he's got him up there now with food. Right now, I was talking. What's our total? Um, eighty-six forty-five three ninety-eight. Okay, so uh, I was looking for the total difference. So eighty-six forty-five. The total difference is thirty thousand. Um, Thirty-eight thousand dollars. I got to say. Somebody said about forty thousand. So right. So I'm looking at the um, five hundred and seventy-one. So it's going to bring it up to six ten. Yeah, six ten. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. So that's probably an eight, an eight percent increase. Yeah. That brings us up to eight percent, which is a, that's a tough, tough thing to say. It is, right. it is a tough thing to say. Yeah. But then if we remove the, well, the surplus, but it still is an eight percent increase. I'm just trying to think out loud. I, mean, I would uh, just speaking for myself. I would still advocate for the food program, even even with that. But I think we have to acknowledge that it makes our case, you know makes our case a little bit tough. I, I'm, still, yeah. I'm still there. Yeah, I'm still there, too. Ed, you and I chatted. This is without reducing that HRA total amount by a small percentage, right? We didn't do that. Yeah. What you budgeted, you budgeted 100%. Of the HRAs of for the HRA. one, more, one more year till we get it, till we get a good look at it. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, because even if you did adjust that by you're figure? not going to bring it down even by a penny. No, I just thought it might help with less than the a food. penny. Right. Like bounce but everything, out. everything, yeah. So where does food show up in the budget if you look at the object codes the way they are now? Right here. And okay. I just added it in. 
Okay. So it's seven point five nine percent increase. Okay. So and what was it before that? It was about seven percent. Uh, we changed okay. it in this right. spreadsheet, but the spreadsheet's changed, so you can't. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, so it's instead of being negative 23,000, it was... Wait, now it went away oh. again. Yeah, I, I can put it in or I can take it out. Someone just asked me if they had it, um, if oh, I, I could show it to them without it. so it goes up. So but we I, have it in front of us without I it. I just said, what was it without it? Oh, gotcha. 7-Eleven, and now it's... Now, with it, it's 7 oh, okay. So point point uh, seven point three eight three nine point four zero. Yeah. yeah. Um. <coughs> I'm still advocating for the food. Yeah. I mean, do you want me to go through the budget to tell you where the money is actually going? Yeah. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you have the budget that I sent you on Friday? It'd be easier than paper. Yeah, I think I sent it to everybody. Yeah. This one? Yeah. Do you want paper copies? It may have changed. Oh, yeah. But I think if Ed's got it, he'll put it, he'll pull it up here. Question is, is this the latest one? You sent it out yesterday, didn't you, or two days ago? Um, this was said from Friday. Does that look like the right one? Yep. That is it. That's yep. the one she yep. sent on Friday. Okay. There it is. Um, so, the revenue here, I mean, it's pretty, I mean, are there questions about where what that even is? And the increases we made, our hope is that, you know, we would have increased participation from adults. So, our hope is that we'd make a little bit more money there. Um, the other increase was within catering. Where did that go? Yeah. And so that's because it, anytime we are having some sort of gathering, open house, we do some Actually, snacks, whatever down, meeting, we should be ordering that directly from our own food service instead of like like we would have cafe mm -hmm. services. So there we should certainly be making a few bucks. <coughs> David was even well. saying at the SU level he would choose our own. We have the house. opening day breakfast and things yeah. like that. Yeah. That like we should mm -hmm. be doing that. Um, and we did think there would be a modest increase in um, participation from the students, so we did put in a 5% increase. And when we talk about a 5% increase, that means serving like five more lunches every day and like three more breakfasts. So it's not like we need to serve 25 more lunches or something. So they're very, I think these numbers are, yeah. are conservative and I think totally realistic. And the federal reimbursement goes up. The federal reimbursement, we don't know 100% if it'll be around that. It's, they haven't, the reimbursement rate for the coming year hasn't been out, but that's just what the feds give us for per, per reimbursable meal. So they give us, and they, so they give you one amount for free, and free kids, one amount for reduced kids, and one amount for pay kids. So even when a pay kid is coming through the line, us, us as a school still get like 34 cents or something from the federal government from the, to add to that pay. Um, the other thing we are going to uh, propose is to increase the cost of lunch by 10 cents. We're at 270 right now and increase it to 280. Um, so we feel okay with that. Um, that's in line with other schools. So we're not like, we thought we'd keep breakfast the same, um, mostly because of Weathersfield. Weathersfield is not, does not do breakfast after the bell and their revenue is significantly less than ours when it comes to breakfast. And so we thought, We'll keep it the same and really um, get them on to breakfast after the bell. Because we, we, we actually make about $10,000 more in breakfast every year than we do. How much? 10000 <coughs> So. So that's your revenue side? Yep. How many kids participate in breakfast? We have. Wait a minute, David, can you, can you, oh. So last after year. Colleen's these, question. I so last year, our average daily participation was around 76 kids. For breakfast? Yeah, out of that percent, 78% were free and reduced kids, and 22 were free kids, uh, paid kids. <coughs> Excuse me. And when you went to breakfast after the bell, that like doubled or tripled, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, like compared to Weathersfield right now, like Weathersfield serves 40, 43 kids, and that's only 67% of their free and reduced population and 33 of their paid population. Yeah, and our daily participation in lunch, um, you know, this is these are last year's numbers cumulative for the school year. It was around 157 a day for lunches. Do you want to look at the expenditures now? Sure. Yeah, thank you. I kind of wanted to do that. What? I kind of wanted to touch I know. So the Spot thought, one of the thoughts here, too, is that if we improve the quality of the food, we will serve more, more food. food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we're hoping that we're being conservative with the 5% and that the food program will cost less. Well, and we actually than market what it. We're, you know, yeah, we like need to market it. We actually are like, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's meant to be a bigger increase than that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, just for people wanting to try it out. Yep. Yeah. That haven't. And, and mm -hmm. also just like supporting us, hopefully. And you supporting know. you. Right. And supporting the program. Um, so salaries, this yes. would increase, this would include, um, two full-time, so a, a like main cook and an assistant cook at each school, and then the manager. And so there's one, one SU position that would manage both sites. And then also have that flexibility to be able to, you know, run to kitchen to kitchen if there's issues and things like that. Um, benefits for those five folks. Food costs, um, 127, we didn't up it much. We wanted to keep it, they actually, when we were talking, Steve kind of chatted with um, some other folks and chatted with Reinhardt. Reinhardt is this, it's almost like a buying club, so all the independent schools can go ahead and go into this buying club through Reinhardt, which is really helpful because then you can buy at a more reduced rate, kind of like if you were like a cafe services and you had that higher buying amounts, um, try to kind of equal it out to folks. So he chatted with them and he thought food costs should not go up significantly, so that's probably our biggest gamble because we, I mean, that's really hard to figure out and know, especially without a manager in place yet. Like, so I think that's that's hard. But we did compare those food costs to pre-cafe services food yep, costs. Yep. And they mm -hmm. weren't. Out they of were whack. not a whack. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, uh, it's, we're doing our best guesses. Yeah. <laughs> um, supplies about the same. The things that went up, um, training and safety in the past. You know, we had thirty-eight dollars for that. That seemed really bit sad um, to have this bet uh, there but the two I mean we need to think about the five staff that are there um, you know are they needing training around cooking more with whole foods um, just getting themselves up to speed with whatever you know attending the there's a great summer Institute those kinds of things like these things that they definitely should be doing and there is a level of um, professional development that is now required for food service staff mm -hmm. as well um, who provides that um, usually the school nutrition Association does and th there's the school nutrition association of vermont usually does most of the professional development training around that they're the ones that do the um the summer institute and stuff so the agency does not none of that or they'll work with it they work with sna a lot okay yep so a lot when it comes to all the regulations and all that kind of stuff the the aoe you mean the aoe yeah yeah and they'll it. have their annual conferences but you pay for those you know mm -hmm. you pay to go yeah mm -hmm. but but that sounds like a good thing Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, these are things they should be going to. Um, not much else. We need the, the POS. This is just like you know how the kids actually pay. There's a a yearly There's fee. There's a software cost. Yeah, mm -hmm. to that. So yeah, so there wasn't anything strange or big or anything like that. Um, it's so just that was, that was the difference. The total difference between in revenue and expenditure. Yep. And so then it ends up being around, you know, 72.5 for the, when we split it 50-50 between the two schools um, for that. It is definitely an increase. I don't, I mean, that's. It's, I thought we said 40 for some reason. Well, we'll go it's down. What okay. we it's what, what, it's 40. Over uh, what we subsidies. After, after subsidies. we've done. Okay. Over yeah. what you spent. Yeah. yeah. We, we did after. subsidize okay. some. So if we do the 50-50 split, it's an increase mm -hmm. of 44 for us 40. from last okay. year. Nice. And for Weathersfield, 20. And so they had, last year, they had a, a significant increase yeah. to their food program. And so mm -hmm. that's why yeah. that's why there. I don't know why they food go so much last year. Why this field? They had, there was a staffing, they had a half-time staff person that, staffing that, that issues. went up to full-time that I don't think was in the budget. And then that, that person got medical insurance? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. 
tune of twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. Ta -da. <laughs> yeah. There you go. They also might have had some increased food costs too, because they tend to spend heavily on the food. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. So, are there questions? I feel like it was as tight. Thank you, Ed. As tight as we could make it. Yeah, it's, and, it's um, as tight as Weathers we felt field, comfortable. There wasn't a lot of hemming and hawing our questions last night about it. Mm -hmm. It's all they're in a similar it is what it situation. Is. Yeah, mm -hmm. their fingers budget are crossed wise. when it comes to their full budget as well. Um, yeah, I think a lot of this success will be in finding the right candidate for that manager position. Mm -hmm. But I think our salary range and benefits yeah. will recruit that. Is that on there? How much was the proposed? Forty to fifty. Mm -hmm. Forty to fifty. Mm -hmm. salary, salary and benefits. No, no. Just salary. salary. Yeah, and that I, I tested out with yeah. the School Nutrition Association of Vermont to so say you, you think that's a equal amount. Yeah, you think that's like forty to fifty per school here? No, no, no. for the position. For the position. Okay. Yeah, for and that's that's the going rate. That's <coughs> right. They said, "Yep, that seems totally fair." That's so a, yeah. the position is a uh, total is eighty thousand nine thirty eight with health insurance. Yep. But that was in your benefits line. Yeah. Right. It should yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So. I couldn't, I couldn't so get I the print out like you guys did. I only got like, how do you get the whole Oh, the color and everything? Yeah, how do you get the Oh, that's not a different, that's not. The different one? When I push print. Yeah, here. Yeah. Thank you. Why so much print? <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty. pretty. <laughs> um, yeah, you just need a magnifying And I think everybody <laughs> around this table knows too, it's not just a financial challenge. It, it's going to, it's going to be a big, it, this is a big undertaking. And to make this work in the complexity of that food service world is is as we said as our consultant yeah. said to us you know we're going to be kind of running a little business here right and, yeah. mm -hmm. and trying to in increase you know make our clients happier mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and it's it's it's, and it's a pilot yeah it's, and it's to, worth to remember too we are not i just had a great discussion with this this other fellow that's running a local food hub that does a lot of farm to school work and he's like, oh, yeah, people, other, uh, there's other folks that are not, that are going independent. There's, like, a wave happening at this moment mm -hmm. of really wanting to do that and yeah. investing in it. So it's not like we're an anomaly here. So, uh, well, and yeah. I think, <laughs> I was just going to say, I think the key, too, will be finding the right person <coughs> to direct this. Mm -hmm. That's basically what I was going to say, too. The, um, and I don't have any... Um, answers but it, it seems that I think we've talked um, in, in, in the big and uh, globally maybe about have correct me please but are we trying to take some of this um, responsibility away from the super the central office and have this new person do more of the uh, right yeah. submitting right yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that, I, that would be my right. vision of the position that right. I have no yeah. say over. Is right. <laughs> it's really right. is um you know that they yeah, would I be taking the vision, stuff off of not us yeah. Trying, but is that the yeah. vision? Yeah, right. yeah like yeah. things would be taken <clears throat> off of Ed's plate. Um, yeah. The things that are Steve's doing right now, with the double certifications and those kinds of stuff, he could be doing. They would be doing as well, um, as well as they. I really see them taking on all the free and reduced meal applications take that out of the school so correct the administration at the school are not dealing with it it's mm -hmm. all coming through yeah, it, it every free and reduced confusing. family is coming through that one same manager yeah and they know what's happening so and, um, just to take that a step further when you were talking to school nutrition association about that what would be a, a, a logical salary offering what we did. Yeah. What we did. So was that whole picture described yeah. to them? Yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah, that's the that's roles that everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they basically yeah. sent me their job descriptions of various things, yeah. and I said, "Well, this is what we want," and I said, "This is what we're thinking. Are we crazy?" And they said, "No, this sounds accurate." So, okay. yeah. Plus I mean, it wasn't like they like checked off on it or anything like yeah. that, but it was right. like, yeah, this seems yeah. that seems you know the going right, and that's the, the within those responsibilities right. with with pretty reasonable pretty good benefits. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, <coughs> lastly, if this is um, when you're talking about in hiring employees in a school setting, um, and something like the food system, which again the word would be vision, uh, vision, the board visions that the school that the food system 
plays a role in science education, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nutrition, health education. Health education. Mm -hmm. So what kind of credentials um, would, uh, when you're setting out to get a, a new director like this, what kind of credentials are? We need to figure that out. That, is that, are, are we talking priorities? similar to a beginning teacher? Are we talking similar to? Well, they have to know how to uh, cook. So yeah. that's going to be the primary. <laughs> right. So they're not, I think that you're looking for somebody yeah. who's skilled in the kitchen and passionate about kids. Mm -hmm. and, but you're not looking for somebody that's a teacher that you're going to put in the kitchen. I hear you. I'm just I'm thinking out loud. Like yeah, no, it I sounds like it's. I a think lot. it's a great point. It's no, it's a, it is a it's lot. Quite a sophisticated like. Um, Especially when you put in all yeah. the the Position. all the regulations yeah. around right. it. So it has mm -hmm. to be. It's going to be someone that's highly detailed oriented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Has knows their way around the kitchen and cooking for masses, mm -hmm. and has a passion for health Educate. education kids. and kids, right. and and see and so that's yeah. Uh, could, would we be able to continue the food committee as we embrace this new, this oh, new thing and yeah. so, that, yeah. so that there is a committee that has a vision for all of this? Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Because I think that's going to be a really, really important thing. Yeah. That there's mm -hmm. someone, or, or quite a few people, who, so that it sort of doesn't fall on the principles right. to be I think should. managing and to be making sure the vision is carried forward. Because right. that's a yeah. lot. That's critical. Yeah. Extra yeah. Yeah work to put on yeah. the principal's yep. plates and, and it shouldn't um, or the one manager yep. or yep. right it shouldn't be forgotten that because remember this is a model we haven't tried and i think when we before we went to cafe services what was happening was a lot of it was falling <coughs> on the principal right uh, because you just had the lead cook yep. and the assistant cook right. and when it came to compliance and people coming in and you know service times and po system uh, point of service mm -hmm. systems and you know the principal would get these reports you know, of, of where they weren't compliant. That that should not land no. on the principal's desk, nor should it land in the central office because, you know, in terms of procurement for tangerines, I mean, it's just not our yeah. specialty, right? right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's, I think this No, and I think having a committee pulled together is going to be really important as well right. as for the community members and, and students. And it could be a joint committee moving. between the you, two. You have to have it. And you have to have a committee. part of compliance. Right, yeah. by yeah. compliance, right. Mm -hmm. So how could... Could we meet compliance? I mean, and I don't know what that takes, but because it was just mentioned, and I like David's word model, because I still think that part of the vision that we've all uh, talked about openly is that that it, that it grows past whatever this start is. Mm -hmm. And so the committee would need to be, for mm -hmm. instance, not a Heartland and Weathersfield committee, but an SU committee. Could be. Mm -hmm. It would need to be. No. And yeah, because I think there was just too much going on in Moscutney district with the switch over and the change over and yeah. But there's gonna be yeah. need to be some philosophical changes yes. exactly. around food right. within that district right. to mm -hmm. move ahead. But, but it's a new district, so it's a good not time a part of the committee. Right. Yeah, then they, 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 they need yeah. to feel welcome and you know Absolutely. and see it see the evolution, mm -hmm. you know, from mm -hmm. the ground yeah. on. So yeah, I mean, they were there for, they were part of the SU committee all along. So yeah. Definitely. So it would be appropriate to, for someone to move that this is included in the budget? Is that the way to move ahead? Well, actually, probably the way to do that would be, since you're really close now, I think you would Just move. Move the budget. Right, right. you need budget. to move a budget. And, yeah, and use that number that budget. Ed had that includes that okay. food service package. So you would, somebody would move to adopt a, a, a budget for FY20 of eight million, is, it, is that it right there? Yeah, $645,398. Yeah, $645, okay. And that's what will go in your warning? Right. So I would make a motion. I, I think that perhaps last time we were in executive session, there was some discussion of some, some personnel changes and I gathered when you were talking to the public members that were here that that didn't, that there were no personnel changes proposed in the budget between last month and this month. We didn't add anything. Based on, we, but you're right, we did have that conversation. We had that conversation. But given that percentage, we, we just didn't go, Christine didn't want to go there.
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have to put my faith in administration, I, and I guess I would just say respectfully that, um, I mean, there's a, a picture illustrated here by the public attending that, that we should be uh, perhaps looking into operations in this kind of a situation. And I just, I don't go, I'm glad that you didn't. I, didn't Christine and I have talked a bunch. <laughs> I don't we think that. there's no, like if we cut a I teacher, our class okay. sizes would be near 30 kids. We can't, there's, there's nowhere, there's no, <coughs> there's no paras left to cut. No, you'd have to, no, you'd have to start with the support staff, guidance counselors. It would, staff, it would, guidance counselors. Yeah. It would, it would be yeah. tough. Yeah. It's already tough. It right. would really yeah. impact. It would impact to be quality. Honest. Yeah, so. the impact would be too dramatic. <coughs> so, um, I so I would move then that um, we vote to approve the proposed uh, 2020 budget of eight thousand. Uh, eight, sorry, eight million six hundred forty-five thousand three hundred ninety-eight. <coughs> Is there any further discussion? So let's just clarify exactly what which line that was. Um, you can add. That is that what you have up, Ed? That yeah. was the. That's what he's got up. That's the, the seven point five. Just the, the gray line, right? No, it's this this one right here. Okay. The only change between what you guys have in your hands right now is that. That last this increased by thirty eight thousand. So it's the full five. full use of the surplus. Yeah, if, you and, if you take no other then action then than Sarah's motion, and then you've automatically and rolled that two hundred and four thousand new food into program into the into. And the we've added the. That's actually the meal correct program. program. With the food service. Correct. Yeah. It's. Can I write on here? And the rate yeah. change would be a, eleven point right three anyway. cents. I got to keep. So I want to tell the board that. Right. I can give you a tax rate today. The legislature is just about to meet, so that tax rate may change. Right. Okay. So that if you get, if we put this in the town report, and then ultimately the tax rate is not the same, it's only because there's been legislative changes. And in addition to that, there are still some numbers on the revenue side. Those, those vote tuition numbers. Like this. Right. It's so state aid for transportation yeah, that, that I don't have. We don't right. Okay, so that could change slightly. Yeah. But what I can't do is once you approve the budget, I can't change that bottom line. I can't change the bottom line. So it'll be eighty-six forty-five no matter what happens. The last thing I'll say is that your tuition numbers, if we go forward, and I start getting in tuition numbers from the other districts then I will be in a situation where I could actually go into that spreadsheet that we went over tonight mm -hmm. and change it from that 2% increase to actual, and that it will change, change the budget. Mm -hmm. yep. But I don't have those numbers yet. Yep. But we still can't well, change that number. Right, no. you can't change that number. And, right. we, but, and just to be clear, we need to vote on the budget tonight, right? Correct. Yeah, we can't, we can't wait on the I don't think you can wait. No, because it's got to go to the print. It's got to go to print here pretty soon. Yeah, but, so but you would communicate those changes at the budget. Exactly. At, yeah, People exactly. Would. Which we have. Before. We could have addendums right. or supplements. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, are we ready to move to a vote? It makes it, again. I just, um, I'm really glad to hear the openness from um, the, the building administrators that you know, we didn't really think we could add personnel this year. Um, I think it's we should feel, uh, and we do. I'm not I'm not telling you guys what to think, but the lunch, the food program is a is a good addition. I mean, it obviously it does involve employees, but it's something for the students and the employees here and in Weathersfield. So, and it's going to have a strong education component. It's well, critical. Hopefully, I mean, and it could generate enough really revenue. Well and right? Like yeah. yeah. Hopefully, we'll have less disruption, less nurse visits, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, 
that's, that's the goal. And to that's say that to say to all of our kids in our increasingly traumatized population, to say I, to me, it's saying like, you matter. Right. Are worth really good food. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's something really powerful about that to me, and that's why I mm -hmm. would support this. You know, that like we and equalize we want it. to do and that it doesn't matter everybody. if you're free or that's right. Doesn't we matter if right. paid, you're getting a everybody's good worth really good food, and we yeah. want to make sure you get that. I think it is, is a is a component here of listening to our community too, yes. which is um, which is really important for people mm -hmm. who are elected to as school directors, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. so mm -hmm. that I, mean, I think we heard that and we heard that folks didn't, you know, they they wanted it to this kind of a food system as compared to the other one and everything that was that's rolled into this. And I would feel differently if I, I, I feel we tried really hard to work within the, the system. Like, we, I feel like we did a really, our best to work within the current system to make the change we wanted to make. <laughs> and it wasn't accomplished. No, so I feel, we tried I, really I, I feel, hard. <laughs> I feel good, I don't, you know, I don't feel like we didn't try our hardest to work within Yeah, no, had. it was two years of really, really, <coughs> really trying. Yeah, the, um, yeah. It's still, it's important to me, and I hope it's important to the other directors here that that we try to, we do everything we can to to grow it mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. the SU. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. That's so. That's I mean, the goal. well, it the becomes all more. It comes down. more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. More, more, more students yeah. enrolled. In, I mean, be, in part of this kind of a program, taking part in in a homegrown food program. Well, I mean, that's that's an equity thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And it's community connection, so mm -hmm. I can support it for those reasons. Okay, are we ready Let's to do it? take a vote? Okay, uh, all those in favor of um, an eight million six hundred and forty five thousand three hundred and ninety eight dollar budget, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Helps to go in unanimous. <coughs> yep, unanimous. Thank you. Um, okay. I'll clear. take any Just input. to clear it up that the surplus is going to go in. Yes, yes, the surplus is 100% going in. Um, if anybody runs across any information that is pertinent to presenting the budget, I would. Yeah. Yeah, no, Colin sent me or something already. <laughs> we're not, we're not leaving. Like, and Ed, before you leave, um, like maybe we don't need that. But one, another question that came up an hour, half an hour ago, in regard to that five hundred dollars. I mean, that would be, it's not a lot, but it'd be worth looking into. The rules, I shouldn't be telling you what to do. No, I, mean, I, mean, I think if you want. The yeah. only reason why I would suggest you just leave it in that fund is just because you've got so much other explaining to do to exactly. complicate well, things. At one point, but, but I think said something we'll, about we'll, we'll it could be rolled we'll in. Yeah. In. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll find out. And then somebody brought up another yeah. question, and, and it was. I think it, was it probably does have to be voted. like it had to be voted on. What? Yeah, we'll check. Double parenting. Thanks, Any other questions for Ed? We good? Sarah. Looks like no precipitation yet out there. So that's. Forum committee. That's good. So we need to talk so about the forum. The forum, and we need yeah. To talk about uh, the, con the sports staff contract. Ne neither one will take a long time. Yeah. Um, I did share last year's presentation with um, who's got you. It? Uh, I, I can share it with everybody if everybody wants it. Yes, please. You want it? Okay. Yeah. Well, one of the things we've done in the past is we've we've Worked on your, your February meeting is generally a work session yeah. on Getting trying to pull the presentation together. So this and is last I mean, year's. Before that meeting, is it worth doing some community like oh, saying, yeah. hey, we'll be at the library. If anybody wants to talk school budget, I'm here, you know, like with a couple of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it is to be very, yeah, and, and to start putting some things on the listserv to kind of, you know, just get, get the narrative out there so that right. people understand where the increases are coming from. Right. Um, as early as possible. Yeah. Is that included as a part of the forum? You could. You don't have to make that part of it. You could. 
I think we have to consider it. What, well, Since what's the forum date? The next <laughs> yeah, forum date? Well, yeah, what's the forum date? Well, we were looking at the, we were looking at the, no, we, um, Sarah and Colleen and I spoke, um, or emailed around the last week in January, and we all had flexibility that week, right? Monday and Tuesday? Monday or Tuesday night that week, right? Yeah, it sounded like we landed on Tuesday. Tuesday worked for everybody, Tuesday but the 29th. it's the 29th, but we wanted to touch base with Thanks, Ed. I'm good that day. The 29th. Does that work for you? Um, what time? Yes. Thank you. I'll check. We're thinking six. You said six hey, last Ed. time, I believe. Yeah. 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 have another board meeting. I might be here late. You're on another board? Of course I'm on another board. <laughs> you only belong to one. <laughs> I feel cheated. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just going to do this board? It's not, it's, it's not as weighty as this board. <laughs> so we had but we had um, a specific kind of um, rotation of, and topics last time. If we're going to add budget, we might. I don't know about adding. I just I think we need to logical. take it into consideration yeah. for yeah. sure. Like people are going to want to talk about March coming up. It's a logical fast, time for if people show up. Um, yeah. to and it's certainly about budget pieces. Yeah. I don't know okay. that we necessarily make it about budget, but maybe. We address it at maybe at well, maybe we should distinctly not. I don't know. I mean, we may need to say because people are going to be yeah asking. people are going to be saying you know we thought this was so that we could tell you what we want in the budget and so we may need we to need to say that we're not in a position start, to this start year. off and say look we we were hoping that we would be able to incorporate priorities from this meeting into this year's budget. Here's what happened, mm -hmm. but. We really want to do some long range planning. We yeah. want to be thinking about this now for next year. Right. Um, so let's talk. There will be a budget meeting on right. this date to explain it further if you want to go to that. You know. mm -hmm. yeah. Keep it separate. Keep it yeah. separate, but yeah. acknowledge mm -hmm. that, you know, I mean, if people come to the meeting saying we want but have a, a, a new full time position in the budget, that, I, that that's just. It isn't going to happen this year, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. We wish it could, but it's not going to happen. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. So we just start off and address the elephant in the room, right? Right. right. And then we move on to what right. we're going to do. Long term planning. That makes sense. This, this was with respect to what position? Uh, this is oh, the, the forum. The forum. On January yeah. 29th. Right. I'm going to check that date. Yeah. I'm sure it's, it's good that the, all the board meetings are done pretty much. What day of the week is that? It's, it's a Tuesday, Tuesday night. Tuesday. You normally don't have board meetings on Tuesday night. Um, and that has to be warned because we're all going to be here, but yes. we decided against minute taking last time. Maybe. Yeah, that's right. And against video, video taking. Right, mm -hmm. because we were going to. We we'll want to have some form of note taking. Right. Keeping both. Yeah. But, but it does have to be warned. Yes. Yeah, because we're all here. We'll all be here talking okay. about school business. What about the nature of the forum? Because there were some, you know, there were some specific. I don't think that changes. Points last time, and now. Yeah, so Darrow says there's a light, uh, light rain out there right now, and it's okay. 28 degrees, and it's, it's becoming a sheet of ice. So, oh, just yeah. in terms of how much longer we stay. Okay, I'm gonna, my kid, my kids yeah, are you home need to go. and I promised I'd be home by nine, so I'm gonna get on the road. Yeah. Then, so yeah. I can get home today. I think so. I don't. Think no, I think we're done. 29th right? is good. We're no, done. The topics aren't changing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, some. I'm not saying that they have to. I just. Um, I do I do maintain that it is a little bit um, headbutting in what we're saying to ha you know have a couple I forget how many there were but say two specific three. points of interest three specific points of interest and then any and then anything else people want to discuss I think that perhaps you know we could trust the voters, I mean, the, the students and the family tonight. Thanks, Sarah. That's a good decision. You know, perhaps they're going to show up and, and, and talk about those three 
points the most. I just think it's really important that we communicate that we want to hear from everyone <coughs> and anything that's on your mind. Excuse me. I think we tried, we wordsmithed the <coughs> flyer. Yeah. We did. I don't recall exactly what it said, but. And we also, we also yeah, talked we about this being the first of many, more than one. So this is a chance to come talk about. These are the topics that rose to the top. Some of these things that, are, that have come up, um, but not the only chance. Um, it's a starting point. Yeah. I think it'll inform the next other one. the next yeah. conversation and what what is driving people or what people are interested in. And we talked about a in terms of the direction. Or yeah. A, a, um, what they need that they don't feel like they're getting a wish list of topics to discuss next. I mean, yeah. Yeah, definitely a place for them to. I remember yeah. that part, but it seemed like I just want to make sure that was you know front and center yeah. in the communication yeah. about January 29th. Okay. So people felt like they could come with anything they they wanted to talk about, as well as those three topics that had I think anything concerned you in the past. Yeah. Taken over, like there's limits to it. Yeah. And that you also, Getting like. hijacked, whether it's not the best word, but, you know. Mm -hmm. it's not Making budget, sure it's productive. Not a budget conversation, so. Well, it's also not just a grape session, you know. It's, it's, right. it's to be productive and to. We're trying, trying to learn about things yeah. that we need to learn about. So we need to narrow it. And also, <laughs> people want to come talk to us. We're here every month. <laughs> but yeah, we specifically I, I, need to I hear from people your about that. On that. Yeah, I, I but I don't know what But we and so by putting these specific topics, we know we are going to get a crowd because this is the crowd that's already griping. And we want to hear in an open forum what that is. Okay, but don't you see that that is sort of like Biasing the people when the people show up in the room, mm -hmm. they're going to be supporters of mm -hmm. of those. Yep. So or people that need it. So it's going to be either or. So perhaps it's not like uh, you know a test environment for us, or not an environment where we might g gain you know a full picture of fam community, family, students, interaction with the school. Well, I can offer that I've, I've been doing principal coffees monthly, and I don't get anybody. <laughs> to, and that's a free, come and yeah. talk about what, yeah, what you, whatever you want to talk about or whatever um, the issues are for you or whatever you want to celebrate at, at And school. I guess maybe we look at that as a good thing. It is. I mean, I've had a couple people stop by. Yep. And and maybe it's you know I, I tried evening last year and was unsuccessful. I'm trying like on your drop off in the morning and um, yeah I look at it as I'm all right. to make it. Is that in your is that in your Friday? It's in my newsletter. It is when yeah. it's, it's when, it, when I'm next doing week it. or something. Mm -hmm. Keep track of that more. Yeah. Okay. And people are busy. I mean, I don't take yeah. it personally. It's yeah. usually if people are unhappy, I'm going to hear about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I do hear positive news <coughs> as well. And that's not the only way people communicate. They are pretty open door, and people stop by when it's convenient for them, which is fine too. So, or um, email. So, in the interest of I see you like David on the road, safety. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which I'm a little worried about anyway. <laughs> I'm thinking about options because I, I do have other, you know, some other options that if yeah. it really is bad, I'm not going to go all the way north. You know. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I would motion to move into executive session um, to talk yeah, about this will take contractual, all two minutes. yeah, to talk about a contractual um, matter and hopefully approve it. And, and, okay. and then we'll keep track of any motion, Diane. So because okay. I'm sure we'll, yeah. I'm feeling optimistic we'll move to ratify. Okay, so let's quickly run to Christine's office yep. and... <laughs>